folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, candidates and stakeholders, uh, welcome to the final, the third and final town hall of our reform now at town hall. For the candidates for the Studio City Neighborhood Council, thank you all for showing up. Thank you guys all for showing up as thank well. Thank you. Hey, not a problem. Um, we do have some people coming later. Um, for everyone out there in YouTube land and uh, for everyone here, we are color coordinated here. As far as residential rent renters, uh, at large stakeholders, service organization, uh, residential homeowners, uh, we have employees and we have uh, business representatives as well. Just so you all know who is up for a vote, you can only vote for the people who uh, represent your little subset. Myself, I'm a renter, I can only vote for renters, uh, as well as at large as well. We're at large as well. So, um, the election date, Thursday, May 16th from 4 to 8 p.m. Walter Reed Middle School Auditorium, 4525 Irvine Ave, North Hollywood. Um, please, vote. Spread the word. Vote, vote, vote. Please listen to these people up here. Again, everybody out there in YouTube world, uh, please listen to everybody. These are the people that want to represent you, and they all have some good ideas. And give them your time of day. So this is a town hall forum, a little bit differently uh, than what we did before. Uh, the audience is going to be able to ask questions of the candidates. Uh, here is your microphone to ask the questions. Everything is hooked up to all these cameras as well. Uh, in fairness, we ask that the questions be worded to apply to each candidate so that they can get an equal amount of time to speak. Uh, I'm going to reserve the right after a, uh, a question from a stakeholder. If it's pointed to, let's say, for example, Richard, I would like to have everybody answer the question as well, so I reserve the right to ask a question in a broader range so everyone gets a proper amount of time in all fairness. Um, for tonight, Lisa Sarkin, uh, representing independent contractors, will be unable to appear tonight as she had a family emergency and will be spending this time in the hospital with them. Uh, we wish her family uh, and her well. Um, let's see, Richard Adams. Uh, Richard had planned on attending tonight with the care plan for his father who was recently diagnosed with advanced cancer has spread, uh, fell apart in the last two hours. He's concentrating on that tonight. Uh, he hopes you understand. We have people, uh, Denise as well, who will be coming a little bit later. We have people who will be leaving a little bit earlier. Please focus your questions, ask them all, and uh, everyone's giving up their time to be here, so this is a wonderful thing. Let's see, where are we at? Um, if you want to hear any more answers um, from the people who aren't going to be here, what you can do is go to our YouTube channel, and uh, a number of these people have already been here before, so you can uh, look at the previous two forums, and uh, again, decide who you'd like. Um, each candidate here will get a two-minute general statement for an introduction, like we've done the last two. Uh, then we will have questions from the audience. Each candidate will have one minute to answer. Each candidate will have one minute to answer. I will hold you to that time with this little timer. As some of you already know, you'll hear it ringing, and I'm sorry, I will cut you off. Again, some of you know that. Uh, again, to keep it all fair. Um, and that's about it. So we'll have two minutes uh, intro, then we'll have a question and answer. If somebody asks a question from the audience, it's a general question, I'll pick a name out of the little baggie here. Again, just to keep it fair, then we'll go in a clockwise fashion. And we'll do that right now with the opening statements. Does anyone have any questions before we begin? Anyone? Anyone? You're, you're, no? Alright. <coughs> so, I am Lisa Sarkin, who is not here. The first name <laughs> holds. Uh, let's see. Randall Free. I do this because we have a lot of people here that are actually running and some aren't here. Joseph Tiki. So, you will be the first two minutes, and uh, from there we will go in a clockwise manner. Uh, give me two seconds, actually, to start this timer, but... Um, and I would suggest that everyone also says their name and also says uh, what they're running for, just so everybody knows and understands. With that said, Joseph, two minutes on you. <coughs> Greetings, everybody. My name is Joseph Tichy. I'm a life coach, life master consultant. I wrote for business representative and I think my call for, for this council is to really bring some awareness and kind of bring some team spirit to work because we as a people we have some needs and the needs need to be heard and act on it and if I come to somewhere I have a great idea 
the idea will die on my lips if I don't have somebody else who would say, okay, listen, people, this is how we do it, and come with some constructive plan how to put it in action. And I believe the power which this council can gather together and use it for benefit of our neighborhood should be used with a good awareness how to create the results we want to create. Thank you. Thank you. And let me just remind people as well that uh, if I throw up one finger, that means you have one minute left. If I throw up 10, that means you have 10 seconds left, then a five second count, then you'll hear this go off, not to make anyone nervous. So with that, Claire. We like to talk about youth and young people. Hi, I'm young people. I'm Claire Cure. I'm 18. I'm a senior at North Hollywood's highly gifted magnet, and I'm a residential renter. Um, and I've been serving as the board's current youth board member for the last two years. I cannot run for youth board member anymore because I am 18. I have aged out of that role. And I really enjoy um, working on the board. I really enjoy representing our community. And I really want all of our voices to be heard. I also have unfortunately have another obligation after this, and I will have to leave very soon. Happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, Jonathan Kalpfeld. I'm running for the uh, at-large uh, stakeholder seat. Uh, I am uh, also a homeowner here in Studio City. Uh, I have been, uh, this is my second election. Uh, I ran for the U.S. House in 2012. Didn't win. Um, and uh, I come from a uh, technology background. Um, I, I can make lights turn off apparently <laughs> while I'm talking. Um, it's a signal. That's right. <laughs> It's, um, uh, I worked, I was at the Jet Propulsion Lab for a long time and one of the things that, that I, I tried to bring awareness to was the importance of, space importance of space exploration. The incumbent congressman got $88 million in funding for NASA, won the seat. So me opening my mouth got $88 million in, into NASA hands. Um, so one of the things uh, I'm doing now is I'm, uh, I'm chief technology officer of a, uh, a very tiny six person blockchain startup and uh, I'm divorced, father of two, I have two small children. Um, and one of the things that's really, really important to me is using uh, technology to increase the engagement between uh, people on the board or councils and, and voters. I think that's really, really important. Um, everyone's familiar with social media, if you wanna get out there and argue about something, but there's also more focused technology and I think there are things that we can do to uh, get people engaged in communicating. I don't think that decisions uh, and governance decisions should be made at election time. I think they should be made every day. And the way to do that is to keep people talking to each other. And I like to be a problem solver, put me in a room full of people. And if they can't agree on something, there's six or seven opinions, maybe I can help them cut it down to three or four. And so that's really, really something I'd like to see myself doing. Um, thank you so much. And I hope I have your vote. Hi, I'm uh, Benji steely Belke. I'm also running for the at-large um, stakeholder position. Um, actually, I also have a technology background. Um, I work in marketing tech. Um, I have a lot of similar interests um, to um, Jonathan, is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the thing that I see the need for is um, this room right now should really be packed because um, there's been a loss of um, the sense of community. Um, and, I, and I feel that especially um, in Los Angeles, we kind of get lost. And I, what I think I can bring to the table is, you know, within my company, for instance, I've you know, founded a bunch of employee resource groups, but those, those sort of things to um, engage uh, with uh, different, not just stakeholders, but different groups like uh, Chamber of Commerce and create those connections to really um, make Studio City um, a very, uh, like prominent um, community within within Los Angeles, um, I often think that uh, Studio City is probably one of those those places that doesn't get enough press, um, especially with uh, with how much we have to offer. Um, so I'd like to see that. The other thing I'd like to see is us taking a, a compassionate um, approach, approach towards homelessness. Um, I think there are a lot of um, ways to do that, um, and then. Uh, Finally, it's just about um, getting more young people involved as well. I think that's a that's a key um, constituency that we we sometimes um, ignore. So, um, Benjamin Belke, running for a stakeholder at large. Richard Niederberg, I'm running for the, the service seat. Um, the 
most longest running person on neighborhood council, lived in Studio City for 65 or so years. And I want to continue to do what I'm doing right now, which is deal with the organizations that are meant to improve and enhance life in Studio City. And um, I was a judge for about 25 years. So I'm pretty fair that way. That's all I have to say. Um, <clears throat> my name is Denise Wolvang. Sorry, I'm late. <clears throat> we had to work late today. Um, but it worked out. Uh, I'm running for homeowner. Um, I have been on the board for a while. Um, we've lost uh, a lot of contact and outreach um, to all the stakeholders, um, and then we need to get back to our basics, which is listening to the people of Studio City, trying to reach out to the people of Studio City, um, and get the you know, Temperature of what's going on and what you, you know, what the people want. Um, we had need outreach. Um, a gentleman is talking about uh, what we can do IT wise, uh, how we can expand what it is we and how we contact people. Um, we used to uh, go to the farmers market and hand out uh, all our little tchotchkes. We still have the tchotchkes, but it was difficult to get people to actually help uh, hand out those tchotchkes and, and chat up the paper. Our, uh, our constituents. Um, we need to get back to, you know, talking to, um, listening to. You know, we can talk to anybody you want, but you got to listen to what the people are saying. Um, and um, I think working with IT, we can actually get there. Uh, we have outreach. Um, there's a lot of uh, people that you can use. Uh, most everybody's on uh, next door. Uh, we can use Twitter. Instagram, there's you know, and there's a new one every day uh, to actually be able to uh, chat up the anybody and everybody in Studio City. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nancy Kramer. I'm running for homeowner's seat. I'm so inclined to stand up right now, but nobody else has. Can the cameras follow us down if we stand yeah. up? If we stand up? Yeah. Okay, all right. Because I feel better if I stand up. Um, my, um, I'm from Minnesota. I moved into Studio City in 2001. I bought a house in 2001. I moved in in 98. I, my business is finding children and young adults from Minnesota and bringing them to Hollywood for careers. I've been pretty successful. And in 2012, my youngest son graduated high school and I found a lot of white space in my life and I decided I'd be a part of the solution rather than the problem. So I'm working on being part of the solution, and that's why I'm running. I don't have anything else. Thank you. Great. My name is Eric Previn, and I'm running for the residential homeowner seat as well. Um, I'm a longtime resident of Studio City. I've been here since 1985. My first home was actually on Arch Drive. I rented an apartment, um, and then I went back there when I um, years later when I moved around the corner on to Reclaw Drive, which is above Carpenter Avenue. And I've been there for a long time. I raised my kids and we went, uh, they sent them to Carpenter and Walter Reed. And then I, um, they were lucky enough to attend the private schools nearby for high school. Um, and we spent a lot of time at Beeman Park. I have a lot of connection to Studio City. And I've also been on the board for a couple of years. And I really <laughs> believe in community engagement and local governance. And I believe that the Neighborhood Council um, has a bright future, believe it or not. I think that you know we have a chance to uh, work together to impact the decisions that happen at City Hall. City Hall is um, you know, the sponsor of the neighborhood councils. So sometimes it requires that we stand up for what's important in our community when the city is negligent. And other times it's important to roll around and be excited um, and cheerleaders. And I feel that um, we're set up to do both in Studio City, but it's important that we reflect what the people want. And uh, you know, through the work that I've done on the neighborhood council so far, I'm on the government affairs committee uh, and the bylaws committee, and I did some time on the budget committee. I feel like I've tried to bring a kind of transparency and we would like to do even more of that because I think that the people um, will would like to participate and be involved uh, and they need to know about it. So outreach is a part of that. And you know, there's no outreach like talking among people. That's the way you get people to want to participate. And so I look forward to uh, making our meetings um, you know, the right length, I'm not going to say longer or shorter, but where people feel heard and where everybody gets a chance to um, participate. So with that, I ask for your vote on, um, yeah, I've got 10 seconds on uh, May 16th, and take a picture of your property tax bill and bring it down <laughs> if you own a uh -huh. property. Thank you. Hey, Rick Rosner, residential homeowner, unemployed comedy writer, 
a former roller skating waiter and not very good stripper. Um, <laughs> as with everybody um, interested in outreach, um, social media, I have a million Twitter followers, most of whom I paid for. Um, <laughs> Also interested in the future of Studio City, particularly with regard to transportation and development. SB 50, for instance, wants to have us put up 60-foot buildings along Ventura Boulevard, yes. which screws over people north of Ventura Boulevard because the sun shines from the south. So smart development would say, no, you can't put 60-foot buildings on the north side of Ventura Boulevard, but maybe you can put them on the south side because then the shadow is, falls on the street, not on the homeowners. Um, and Studio City right now is a pretty good place to live and in, a, in an overall city of Los Angeles that has a bunch of challenges and uh, one of our jobs is to, is to kind of visualize what our future might look like and how to keep Studio City pleasant, livable for people of all economic levels, um, even as uh, the city around it possibly becomes less pleasant. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Adam Summer. I'm running for the residential homeowner seat. I've had the pleasure to meet quite a few of you and Part of the reason I really do want to be part of the board is to work with this diverse group of individuals. I think it's a rarity as an adult. I've seen, I mean, there's very little opportunity to be in a teamwork setting when a, with objective driven goals that are really positive and not fiscally driven. Uh, luckily I've had uh, an app that came out a few years ago that's done really well. So that's opened up my life to be involved in local, local civics, neighborhood needs, and neighborhood-based initiatives. Uh, I'm definitely still in the honeymoon phase of my life in Studio City. I've been here for three years. I've been at home for three years. I want to get involved in everything. I'm not jaded by what seems to be the infighting on the board. So I'm really excited to be involved in all of it. Why I would be a good candidate uh, for the board, I think I'm a good facilitator of human beings needs. There's a lot of different voices in Studio City and a lot of them aren't being heard and a lot of them are not going to stand up and go to these meetings. We have to go to them. So the past few weeks when I've had the opportunity to meet my neighbors forcefully by ringing doorbells, most of whom don't answer because they think they're being robbed, I've <laughs> got to introduce myself to people who will never probably attend a meeting but I know who will talk to me if I'm persistent. Uh, if we want to create neighborhood-based needs and neighborhood-based initiative, neighborhood initiatives, we got to engage them. They won't necessarily engage us, but I've had a ball doing it. If I'm elected if, or not, I've met my entire Studio Village neighborhood and I've met people like you. Uh, I'm still very enthusiastic and hopeful and optimistic and I hope you will consider me for the board. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alex Zbicki. Uh, I'm running for the employee seat, and uh, I've been on the board for five years. And I've also been involved with uh, neighborhood uh, uh, groups like Safe Coorda Canyon, where we were instrumental in stopping the Harvard Westlake project on there are uh, on the side of a literally removing a side of a mountain on Long Coldwater. Very proud of that. Um, we have a situation here that's kind of interesting. Um, if you've ever been to a carnival and you, you've, you've played some of the carnival games and whatnot, eventually what happens is as you're, as you're throwing the balls in those holes that look so easy to get to, uh, you realize it's not happening because it's, it's sort of geared against you actually winning and, and being effective in, in, in doing that. Our city kind of has created that type of scenario now. Uh, what we have is a neighborhood council system that was created for, uh, uh, for an entity to be able to express the needs of our community. It, it came from the, uh, the, uh, the result of our secession movement, which failed. Uh, but now what we're seeing is that a lot of the people that are involved with our group are actually people that reflect the views of the city downwards to us. They're impressing upon us how they want things to be done. So when I hear about people on our board that are running, that are actually part of the, uh, the city, uh, campaigning even for the city, 
uh, I just I just can't believe it. I realize how incredibly wrong that is because I believe that I don't want to hear what our city wants. I want them to hear what we want. And so we need to really move and 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 go towards that because really it don't it doesn't matter how many things you give away to people to come to the meetings. If you're throwing those balls at the carnival and you're not you're not getting a prize, you're not going to come anymore. So what we have to start doing is create a system that that we can actually perpetuate what we want and make sure that change comes to to all of us. Thank so you. thank you very much. We are back at the top of the key. All right, wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Um, and, and keep in mind that even though there's, this is the um, lowest turnout we've had so far for all these three, just know that people are still watching these on YouTube. All right, so we are still getting views. Just understand and know that. So um, uh, with that, um, I didn't get a list going on, but does anyone want to ask a question first? Peter. I have a softball question. Go on up there and ask, my friends. Uh, and you will all get one minute to answer. Hard balls. And uh, is this, uh, if it's a general <laughs> oh, Michael, question. Before you, can you announce where we can watch this? On? This will be on the YouTube channel as far as I know. Peter, you're actually the one to, to say this. Is this the Studio City Neighborhood Council YouTube channel? That's it. There we go. That's where anyone can watch it. So you can go there. You can uh, grab the URL and just tweet it out or do whatever you want. Peter. Uh, I want to know uh, uh, if everybody uh, has an idea of how blockchain can benefit the neighborhood council. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I was going to say. Uh, maybe this was maybe this was asked uh, previously, but if um, uh, whether you make it on as a board member or not, is there a particular committee that you would join or would like to see formed, <clears throat> and would champion that, even if you're not elected? And with that said, I'm trying to pick a name right now to get ahead of things as we're doing the first town hall here. What do we got? Uh, not Janine. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, we're close, we're coming close. Uh, Stacy Joyner. Mm -hmm. uh, some, sooner or later, we're gonna come to somebody. And Raduka's not here. There are a lot of people running, so people know. Uh, no. Benjamin Steely, no. Right here. Oh, I'm sorry, Benjamin. Yeah. Jeez, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> and I, I got my Benjamin. So, yeah. All right. I, th I think he'll do better at blockchain no, than I would. You got it. You're um, a marketing guy. See, so yeah, I've actually, I've actually um, given this a lot of thought, and I had the pleasure of talking to Nancy about this. And the board, the, or the, 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 my primary interest is in outreach, um, the outreach committee, especially on the, the technology side. Um, I think we have a lot to do to automate, for example, the notifications, as well as um, get people to sign up in person and then follow it up with digital touch points. So outreach is, is, is the main thing. And I, and I plan to be involved, whether elected or not, uh, just because um, it's something that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about Studio City. And um, the other one would be homelessness. I think there are, again, compassionate ways for us to um, address homelessness. We're not gonna solve it. Um, I don't think that's going to happen overnight, but there are ways that we can address and at least make it um, more livable. So, thank you, Richard. Okay, um, as a question, what would you do if you're not elected? Well, before I was elected, I was dealing with land use on both the SCRA and also this this council, and I was happy to do that. You know, currently my more my biggest concern is trying to improve and enhance the quality of life in Studio City. That's why I'm head of the Cultural Affairs Committee. And I've been on a lot of committees also. But the primarily basically just keep the people around and provide them something to help make things better. Most initiatives come from the individual, individual people in the public, the stakeholders. You just carry it out. You don't have to think of everything. All you have to do basically is try to deal with what the majority of the people want. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I've been on a few uh, a few committees. Uh, committees are where everything starts, so committees are very important. Um, uh, land use is something that watches over what's built here. Um, it's it, very important. Um, it has to do with the, the lovely signs in the fronts of of uh, some of our businesses. So um, that's one place where. Um, you, we all need to, to look. Um, SB 60 will do some devastation to our area. Um, and we, as a group, could stand up and say, maybe we don't want um, their single family dwellings, you know, 
taken taken down and then have some large buildings, uh, luxury buildings at that, uh, put up in its place. Uh, and um, with with uh, Richard, uh, culture you know cultural affairs, it has to do with where we're at, um, making uh, the Studio City better, um, engaging people in outreach. Uh, those are the three areas which I would say. Hi, Nancy Kramer, homeowner seat. Um, uh, several years in 2012, I ended up on a grievance panel, and that was my first exposure here to the Studio City Neighborhood Council. I quickly found myself on three reigns of bylaws committees, so three different presidents serving um, uh, on bylaws. I am a trained parliamentarian, so that is definitely some, a very comfortable fit for me. And I, I reached out to Benjamin because he was a tech guy, and I think right now the biggest need for the Studio City Neighborhood Council is to get our outreach committee um, jump started. It needs it needs a lot of uh, attention right now, so that's one of my strong interests. All the other committees are super important, though. So. Thank you, Eric Previn, a residential homeowner. And um, I'm on the Government Affairs Committee, and I continue with that work, and I like it. Um, it's a way of reflecting what's happening in the governance at the city here in our community and sending notes to the city about what we think. You know, So, for example, um, we took an interest recently in a weird rule that tried to limit, um, you know, that contractors who want to do business with the city had to disclose whether or not they were affiliated with various organizations, including the NRA. And we thought that seems weird to do that, even though we're not, we're all for, uh, you know, gun safety and we're not members of the NRA or particularly interested in being members, but we don't want people who to feel like they're being scanned to work. It felt very political. We sent a message to the city. The city got the message, uh, ignored the message. <laughs> And then they got sued. And now we can say, I told you so, which is not worth anything, but we're going to do a community impact statement following up. And we think that they should, the candidates themselves, I mean, they pay for it. Thank you. Hey, I'm on the Government Affairs Committee. I like it. Um, I kind of think the Outreach Committee is going to turn into the Outreach Tech Committee. Yes. Um, and if so, I'll, I'll join that. And this isn't exactly a committee thing, and I wouldn't want to be the person who does it, but I think we can have a high school outreach effort because there are hundreds of, of high school kids in town who are applying to elite colleges who need something to write essays about. <laughs> and we can use those kids to, 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 that we can have them projecting what Studio City 2030 might look like. We can have them canvassing. We can... We can have them going talking about you know awareness of of, of, of sexism, racism. We can we can recruit those kids to you know, be our uh, essay slaves. I'm Adam Summer, uh, homeowner seat. So two and a half years ago when I bought a place in Studio City, I had no idea about Studio City Neighborhood Council. Uh, a year ago, I still had no idea about Studio City Neighborhood Council. However, I got involved in District 2 um, under Paul Krikarian's office, and they encouraged me to start fitness boot camps because that's kind of a little bit of my background. So I started those at Beeman Park. Uh, really enjoyed having my own neighborhood-based initiative. Um, whether I'm elected or not, I don't think it changes a lot for me because the opportunity for me to be on a homeless committee um, and then the cultural affairs committee, as I mentioned to him, sounds super exciting. Um, I'm a different voice. Every one of us is a different voice. But I think I can incorporate and integrate some of what makes me strong into the cultural affairs committee and planning events. And also with homelessness, I think I have a very unique background in personally dealing with homelessness on a family level. Uh, but I also love anything that has tangible results and that has immediate gratification. And working with the homeless community definitely does. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alex Zbicki, employee uh, seat. Uh, I, I think uh, what we're seeing also is uh, I, I would like to possibly uh, deal with uh, land use. Uh, a lot of the people that have come and gone in our in our uh, in our midst, I uh, have been involved with a lot of. I'm in. I'm a real estate agent, uh, but but a lot of our my fellow ilk 
have been involved with special interests, developers, they've bought homes. Out of one side of their mouth, they say, we need to really be careful with our developments and not be egregious, and then they go and they represent a developer who does something really insane. So I'm not that guy. I've already uh, uh, created my, my success, and I'm very happy that I have. Uh, what I want is 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 reason and 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 construction and development that is manageable and reasonable, uh, unlike maybe what we've seen at the Marrakesh with that nightmare uh, facade uh, where that used to be. Uh, something like that seems it's a little out of place and it's something that needs to be squelched uh, again reasonably. That's so that's what I would do. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Joseph Tiki Business. My passion and trait is personal development. So. If I could choose some other committee, I would kind of link to that focus to next generation and whatever really needs some help to get better person than he is right now by creating space for that and holding that, that idea that, you know, we are who we become and the becoming is never ending process. And while we have the awareness of let's become better, become better and come together and help each other. At that moment, we can really grow above any expectation in a given moment. So, so one of the things that really interests me is the Studio City brand. People go on Saturday nights, where are they going in LA? They're going to Brentwood, they're going to Santa Monica, they're going to West Hollywood. I want, I want people to say, where are you going? I'm going to Studio City going to Firefly, I'm going to Laurel Tavern. I think what's really important is that we have an amazing brand here. I was watching uh, Goosebumps recently with my children who are eight and five, and there's a scene that's filmed, and I know it takes place in New York, but there's a scene that's filmed in a CVS. And my daughter said, that's the CVS near our house, the one on Laurel Canyon, the one on the south side, not the north side, because you know I never understood why we have two CVSs. Um, <laughs> but on, on the opposite side of the street. But you know, what's really important is we have such a good brand here. And so outreach, I think there are ways, I, I would love to see Visit Studio City on a Facebook timeline in an ad. I'd like to see us advertising, you know, and getting Studio City really out there. So it's important, building the brand. All right, thank you. And that is everyone. All right, next question, anyone? Yeah, no, you, you've already had. Go for it, jump on up there, please. And uh, for everyone else, again, um, I'm playing to the cameras here, your names and what you're running for, again, just as a reminder all the time. Please. Hi. So I hear a lot about engagement, and I hear a lot about outreach now. My question is, and I don't want to hear about your past, I want to hear about how you've campaigned, how many people's hands you've touched, how many people's doors you've knocked on, how many phone calls you've made. I don't want to hear about what you've done in the past. I want to hear about how you've campaigned, how you know what the stakeholders really want. All right, thank you. And with that, uh, let me get uh, Claire. Alex is Bicky. Oh. And uh, to, to clarify, this is um, how we've done outreach already, to understand uh, the stakeholders better? Yeah, for the campaign, not in the past. Okay, how are we moving forward with that? Yes. Please. Alex, So what have I, I, not what I've, who I've already shook hands with, or who I will shake hands with? Is that what you're asking? No, who are you shaking hands with on this campaign? You want to know who I shook a hand with? How many? How many people? Very good. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I didn't uh, bring shuttle buses of... Of, of voters from uh, people that I know in the business. I'm hoping to maybe do that in the future, but I don't think it's, it's quite the right, right thing to do. What I have done is walk down Ventura Boulevard and I've actually spoken with a lot of the entities that we've dealt with, the owners of a lot of these companies that have a lot of employees who maybe felt they've been wronged with, with uh, people that have been uh, maybe not treating them very fairly in that community. And they're looking for uh, uh, someone who can, can, can provide an equitable viewpoint on what their needs are. Because as was stated down here, we do need to make our city a destination place. We need to celebrate our history. And I hopefully will I'll help doing that. And I am. I'd say 137 people I've shook hands with. Thank you. Joe. Joe, is that for business committee? Mm. I'm not sure if I ever shake anybody concerning this council as I start to, like last month, I decide to, to participate. And 
What was the other part of that question? Sorry, I get lost. Oh, that's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's how you make a best effort to understand the stakeholders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Joe, you good? Oh, I would say one thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, know, the, the quality of our life is, is determined by quality of the question we're willing to ask. So if I want to really ask better, find out better what the people around me want to know, I start to ask better questions. And use the council, come up with the, with the brainstorming, with the mastermind power. What's the best question? What's the best question? And there we go. Thank you, Joe. So I, I, you know, on this election cycle, I got into it very, uh, very, very late. Well, when I ran for Congress, I shook about 600 hands, and then I had a really bad cold about a week after. Um, you know, I think one of the, one of the things I've done is I've talked to a lot of people that have lived in the valley, and have lived in Studio City, and they say, first of all, that's not the valley. Well, we kind of are, and we kind of aren't. We're depends who you ask. And one of the things that I, I know, and I always want to ask people, why did you move away? oh, the rent was too high, or oh, my job was closer. And so, you know, I, what I want to do is get people to bring their businesses to Studio City also. I think it's not just getting visitors, but I think, you know, I'd love to have my tech startup have an office on Ventura. I think that that would be a really good thing. So you know, that'll be a lot of handshaking in, 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 in that. So, you know, that's, I got into this lately, literally Johnny come lately, but Jonathan Kalbfeld <laughs> at, at large seat. Hi, uh, Benji Steely Belke, um, at large seat as well. Um, I have literally uh, shook in zero hands, um, just to be in complete transparency. Um, but what I did do is um, I did place Facebook ads, um, and actually it's interesting to see what the different comments were. I had someone comment about um, like okay, about the meetings, and then it's just like asking, okay, what about the meetings? And it's like, okay, people still show up for the free pizza, like they're not really doing much. And I'm like, okay, like and then mentioned something about the elderly. And then, um, and then basically uh, the, the whole thing was like, okay, what can we do for the elderly? And he actually said to me, he's like, you don't know your stakeholders. And that's actually pro probably pretty true. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a lot to learn about that. I, I, I like to talk to different people and, and, and ask questions. Um, but um, I, I think that's, that's probably, a, that is an opportunity. Um, and, and that's one of the things where uh, I plan to be engaged uh, no matter what. In terms of in terms of these, especially the in-person events, and then followed by digital. But I think digital is the is an, a a place for huge opportunity. Yeah. Richard Niederberg, going with the service seat. Um, my reaching out basically is when I'm doing part of the head of the um, cultural affairs committee. Basically, we have three or four different events in this particular room. We have primarily cultural and historical lectures, free to the public, also free to the city, except for the rent, except for the room. And also we also have two film series normally per year, of probably four nights, again, free to the public. And that's how I communicate with people. Come see a movie or come to one of our historical lectures. You know, that's the best communication. Don't tell me, show me. Hi, Denise Wolving, um, homeowner. Uh, I have started, my essentially started the campaign. I go door to door, I ring doorbells. Um, I want to see the person, I want to talk to the person, find out what it is, and you know, it's like find out what they're, they're thinking. Um, the only way you can do that is ring a doorbell and talk to the person. If they don't answer, I leave a flyer and you know how to contact and uh, you know learn. Um, I've I've started it. You still we still have some time, so you know I start one end and, and just try to keep moving. Hi, Nancy Kramer, homeowner seat. So what a great question. So I sent all my emails. I went through my whole data database of my emails, and there was like 500 people who I knew owned a house or I thought maybe they owned a house in Studio City so that wiped out a whole slew of people um, but they all got an email blast of, of it one of those people responded and said oh can you help me with the water that's been in front of my house for the last 15 years and I'm like sure and then I felt really bad like wait am I buying a vote by saying that and I'm like no that's probably what my job would be to do is help them figure out why they still have a puddle in front of their house but I have to say the best source for it is is what Eric gets credit for. He's gonna stand up in a second. And that's the Friday night forums. Because hearing what the, the people who come to those forums and their needs and their requests 
is exactly what needs to happen, and Eric has been doing it with probably a committee of people. But. Eric, Eric Previn, a uh, residential homeowner, and those forums don't count, though, because you asked from today forward, so, but I appreciate the nod. No, no, but, they do count. You're but right. this you is today. Totally right. I but was that's actually to, today. I was just busting <laughs> the questioner. I, the point is, is that going forward, running for office is challenging. You know, I got 36,616 votes in a county election, but that's a bigger pond. Um, you know, in this uh, environment, you have to meet people, and we, you know, all of, I think many of us during an election, I mean, I certainly talk to people when I'm at the supermarket, talk to people when I'm at the YMCA. I also post some of these things. At the, you know, I'm always trying to, I'm really trying to get people to have awareness. I'm frustrated because even as a home, homeowner, resident, residential homeowner, you know, I qualify, it's awkward to ask people, so are you an owner? Are you a renter? You know, it's a little bit weird, frankly. Okay. And we've been trying to change that. We all work together to try to change that. But again, I think a lot of people echoed the same thing. Meeting people, touching people, you know, not inappropriately, like that great <laughs> joke in School of Rock where the teacher said, I've touched your children and they've touched me. And everybody was like, oh my God, Jack Black. <laughs> but not like that, like funny. And we need to talk and get people in. So lots, thank you. Um, Rick, homeowner, I'm not your ideal candidate because seven weeks ago they found, well, I would have been a little lazy even before they found the tumor in my kidney. Um, but I've been taking some stuff. I'm waiting. It's small. It's not going to kill me um, until like 2035 or something. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the UCLA surgery robot. In the meantime, I'm taking this stuff to tar try to knock the size of the tumor down a little, and it makes me poop. So I stay home. I've shaken one person's hand, and really, considering the poop situation, you really wouldn't want to shake my hand. Um, thank you. I think that's a great question. Um, sorry about yeah. everything I just heard. <laughs> All right, I think that's a great question because it's very emblematic of the concerns that everyone, not only on the board, have, but the stakeholders as well. Engagement, engagement, engagement. Three weeks ago, everybody talked about outreach, and there's been three weeks for those candidates to take this small window, the small opportunity they have without any shame to knock on any door they want for a good reason. So I've done that. I've printed out my four by six cards and started in Studio Village and have finished that. And most people don't answer doors, but they see you through the people and you're safer because, they feel safer because of it. I think if you miss these opportunities, you might miss the opportunity to say hi to that person when they're walking their dog and tell them about a meeting or tell them about your situation or your solution for a current or future problem. So let's take the opportunity now. I'm doing it, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I have no, no end to the different amount of people and the different views and ideals that they represent. So it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, you were first, all right. So with that, we got, you just know, had another one. Anyone else here for the moment? Come on out. Come on. Go, go for it. You can, see, you can yell it out. Okay. So, if you haven't been to any of our meetings, it's amazing. Serving on the NC is really a serious business. The NC is important to this community and it, it should be doing an extremely good job for the community. But it involves being at a board meeting every month for three to six hours. Six is really hard at board meetings. And also serving on committees as a chair and possibly committee members. That's more hours out of your month. And participating in cultural events, the, the events that we put on. And showing up at the farmer's market to hand things out. It's not a one hour a month job. And it is a job. And there's homework. And you have to learn a lot. You have to go to training for this. It's not easy. I want you all. Do you all understand that? Um, you'll have a lot of support. And what I can tell you from being on numerous committees, I, I wouldn't run for board because <laughs> I don't want to be shot. So, um, but the committees are really wonderful. Sometimes they're hilarious. Sometimes they're sad. And sometimes you walk out going, God, we did something good. And so I encourage you all to think about 
how you're going to fit those hours into your lives. But if you do, it's really worthwhile. So, do you have the time commitment? Do you know what you're getting into? Which takes a lot of work, and you're not being paid for it. Uh, are you in for the long haul? Adam, you are the first person. Uh, thank you. I think that's also a great question. I'm pretty cognizant and very aware of what the neighborhood council means and as a time commitment, what it entails in your life. I've taken very tangible steps over the past three years to build a life through my app that has allowed me to partition a, a huge amount of my life to things that I enjoy on a neighborhood level, on a citywide level, on a family level. Uh, and I love to see how those will all synergize together. But I purposefully have set myself up to become a bigger part of my community. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity. I'm very excited to do it. Will I sit through a six hour meeting if I'm not mandated to? And Richard Adams speaks over and over. It's hard to. <laughs> However, if I'm on the board, that changes everything because you're embedded and you're committed. Uh, however, I still would love to see them be a little bit shorter and more succinct and efficient. So thank you for that question, though. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, you know, I, I definitely, I've been on the board for five years, as I mentioned. My name is Alex Zbicki, employee seat. Uh, it does, it does take a lot of commitment. But, uh, you know, that's what you're there for. You're there to listen. Um, you know, the city council has uh, meetings every week, and there you go collectively for a few hours. So collectively, I'd say they're about 20, 25 hours a week, a month, so, or a, a month, yeah. So anyways, the point is, is that I do want to make things more efficiently, but the last thing I want to do is squelch people's point of view. Uh, I think we've had a problem with our 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 leadership in the last couple of 10 years where we've cut people off. I just think it antagonizes people. It creates a, a much more uh, uh, antagonistic environment and people resent that. So uh, give people their space. Just write everything off for that night. You're not going anywhere. Have a good time with all of us. <laughs> Maybe sneak a little beer on the, on the, underneath the table or something. But uh, that's, that's yes. I, yeah. Thank you. Okay, Joseph from business. <laughs> So I actually know the neighborhood council only from outside. I don't know how it's going from inside. But, um, I'm expecting to put some time in it, and I'm my own business owner, and I also so I'm I'm I master my time, manage my my activities in my my preferable way, and I reach the stage in my life when I really turn to service, when really being here for for each other. It's, it's priority in human life. Nobody can really achieve anything bigger on his own. So teamwork and make it efficient, that's, that's, that's my core. And if I can you know, bring my attitude, my awareness, my whatever is it, my know-how to the teamwork of neighborhood council, put it on the next level, I think it's worth every hour. Thank you. So 50 years ago uh, in July, we, we did something amazing as a species. We put a couple of people on the moon and they got to walk around. Some people might say that's a conspiracy, although I think the people that believe that were recently banned from Facebook. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, that I've, always, I've always believed is that, you know, humankind's uh, accomplishments are always punctuated by things that are a pain in the butt to do. Parenting. I mean, I'm a single parent, so there's, that's a lot of time. But I also think that people have a lot more time than they realize. And one of the things that I, I've noticed in my field, um, especially working with other companies, uh, working for companies, is that with technology, it's a lot easier to be engaged and connected. I hope that we set up a Studio City Slack chat, for instance, so people can join the Slack and talk to board members and, and stuff like that. And so that's you know one of the things where I think it might reduce the unnecessary amounts of face time while giving us still the ability to all interact on a regular basis. Thank you. I actually completely agree with the, what he just had to say. The one thing I'll say is um, I honor my commitments, um, especially with something like this, there is um, a weight to it. Um, the, the thing is you have to be economic in the way you prioritize and you can't focus everything on once. For example, I'm very careful not to spread myself too thin um, and look at what I can do 
um, within a given period of time and then prioritize that time. Um, if you talk to my husband, like I am constantly working, um, and th- but it's just like I'm also constantly prioritizing. So whether it's a hobby or something else, it's, it's important to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And that's one of the things that I would like to bring um, to the neighborhood council or to committee is like the economic benefit of each thing that we're doing or each agenda item. So. Okay. Richard Niederberg, service organization seat. Um, I've been doing it neighborhood council well over a decade. Haven't missed a meeting yet. Also done a lot of different of the um, committee meetings, you know, chaired some, member of others, all worked out. And uh, well, because you do the same thing. The important is to be diligent and keep on doing it and not just try to find some issue you don't like and flake out. I believe you staying in it and stay to the very end. Uh, Denise Bovang, um, homeowner uh, seat. Um, what Victoria said is very true. Um, I have been president, I've been chair, um, I've been a member. Uh, one thing I've learned is how to budget your time. Um, you'll find that you, if you want to do it and you do your homework and you do your due diligence, um, it is not a, a, a difficult you know, task. Uh, but it does take time, and to do it right, you have to have an investment in it. Hi, Nancy Kramer, homeowner seat. You give a busy person something to do and they'll get it done. I am totally uh, understand the commitment and I'm willing to take it on. I want to talk my time a little bit about the meetings. Um, as a parliamentarian, those board meetings, I've been at that one that went till midnight. It was a disaster. And it wasn't because people weren't allowed to speak. It was because there were programs that the city wanted us to show. That can't happen. We have to be much more um, critical, not of our stakeholders having time. They need all the time in the world. But of our time as board members speaking and our time inviting other people to present programs. And I think that can eliminate those long, very long meetings. Eric Previn, residential homeowner, time commitment. It's, you know, I used to um, work uh, for television shows late into the night and I would feel a terrible tension about wanting to be in two places, home with my family, but you know, I'm at the job. For most of my life, I felt that horrible tension of feeling like you need to be in more than one place. And I think a lot of people feel that. With the neighborhood council, I really want to attend. And I, I attended the board meetings before uh, I got on the board, um, and it was frankly because of the way those meetings were run that I kind of took an interest in possibly challenging it because though they were professional and official, there were certain aspects that were, you know, fishy to me. Like, for example, what was this $9,000 charge? No questions, we're done. And I was like, what? I don't. And then one time they tried to drag me out when I asked that question. So I do feel like we have to do our job, and that, you know, there may be some uh, outliers where it goes super late, but. You know, a meeting for a couple hours, if we're hearing from folks, is a great opportunity to take it on board and bring it back. Thank you. Rick, homeowner. Um, I'm, I had a bunch of good jobs for a long time, so I can be unemployed. And I'm not working to not be unemployed. My wife says, just tell people you're retired. Um, <laughs> you mentioned about being informed. I'm an, I'm an incredibly quick study. I earned 12 years of college credit in one year. Uh, so I, I can learn stuff fast. Um, what else? Uh, nothing. Go on. All right, Glenn. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh for 29 oh, wait, no, more one, seconds. One more, save one more thing. I worked in bars for 25 years. I'm much more awake starting when the sun goes down. So if a meeting goes till. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Catherine, do you want to ask you a question? Okay. Um, Studio City is like a small city. It's, um, but I am also concerned about the geographical focus of different members. Um, whereas sometimes maybe the further away that you live from the actual problem area, it gets less focus. So, Without, um, how can you remedy this? And without giving your address, can you share with us perhaps just the neighborhood you live in, like next door neighborhood maybe? 
Thank you. Nancy. Okay, good. Nancy, homeowner seat. Um, I am within walking distance of right here and Beeman Park. Although I can assure you, I never walk here, <laughs> but I, I could. Um, I, I actually could walk to and have walked to actually several times to the Bank Adventure Boulevard and uh, Laurel Canyon. Um, but pretty much my area is definitely the edge over here of Sherman Oaks all the way up to Coldwater to CBS Radford. I tend not to go further. Thank you. Eric Previn, residential renter. I live above, uh, sorry, homeowner, residential homeowner. I live above um, Carpenter Avenue on the hills, in the hills on Reclaw Drive. And it's a lovely neighborhood. We have a very strong neighborhood community and watch group. Um, I had a conversation with my neighbor the other day who said, who was trying to encourage me to put up lights in an area where I didn't feel we wanted to put up lights, but she would, she's very focused and I'm incredibly appreciative of her diligence because it's that neighborhood watch that makes us feel safe. We don't have, you know, issues with people wandering around so much because it's in the hills, but what we do have is people parking at night um, and, you know, in the kind of afterglow of the Ventura Boulevard vibrancy, they like to, and I don't, it doesn't bother me, but I'm respectful of that. And I'm, we've been straight brainstorming how we can, you know, solve that problem without floodlights into the night because it's, it, it, my neighbors and I both would experience that in a way that would be difficult. Thank you. Uh, Eric Preben. Rick, homeowner of what they call the Silver Triangle, uh, Laurel Canyon and Ventura. Um, but I have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which means I have to go to five gyms a day. So I go, I go doink, doink, doink. I mean, there's a, in LA, there's a gym every mile and a half or so. So I'm familiar with the whole area just from going on a daily ridiculous obsessive circuit. Um, and my wife, who's probably, she'd probably be a much better candidate than I would be. Um, she's very plugged into the neighborhood with, um, and she, she has friends from, throughout the community and she tells me what's going on she's she's friends with sean the the the, the outreach cop and uh, I, I through her i know the the whole deal all right i think that's a great question the reason being is it's not a question people would feel comfortable asking because it seems like it's very superficial but it's it's very imperative that we know where we're getting our voices or I guess to analogize our community, it's like a bunch of tributaries trying to run into one river, which is all connected to the big river, uh, I guess the Los Angeles River, <laughs> running into downtown, running to our city council. So the more pockets we reach, the more nexus points we have, the more we force ourselves into those channels and act as a portal, the stronger our community will be. And as an aggregate, the more powerful we are. So we have to build a strong aggregate, and the only way we do that is by targeting areas that are not engaged, that are not heard, that are underrepresented. Uh, my area, Studio Village, from what I understand, there is not any representative in that corner pocket. So I would hope that I could be that voice. Thank you. Yeah, hi, my name is Alex, is Bicky employee uh, seat. Yeah, it's funny because if you look at what's happened in the last five or six years, you can kind of see what a reflection was of our board. Uh, funny enough, uh, let's see, I live in Galewood, which is Longridge Estates, right across the street from Harvard Westlake. Let's see, in the last 10 years, we've gotten stadium lights that bathe all of the hillside community, have impacted all of the wildlife and neighbors. Uh, Sportsman's Lodge uh, happens to have a big problem with the, the, the future development as well as current noise issues. And what else we got? We got Weddington is gonna be facing a big challenge in the future. Funny enough though, there's not a lot of problems around Colfax Meadows. That's uh, something that maybe is just uh, just uh, happenstance, but, but it'd be nice for someone like myself and I'm sure a lot of these other candidates to have a balanced uh, care for everyone around there. Cause I do sympathize when I hear some of these tapes coming out from the uh, parties they're having at Harvard uh, Sportsman's Lodge absolutely unacceptable so irrespective of my geog geography i will have a, a an even uh, look at all that thank you joe okay joseph for business i live on between byland and ventura right next to universal city and uh, also i believe that problems are depends how they are presented if you present it in a way listen this is the problem and i need to help with that 
I believe everybody will, will do the best for, for reach out and help mm -hmm. you with that. That's my opinion. Jonathan Kelbfeld, at large stakeholder. Uh, so the part of Studio City where I live is Arch Drive, um, and it's kind of a different part of Studio City. When I bought when I bought there, um, not running as a homeowner because it's too complicated. Um, I I picked it because it was affordable, and it's still what you would describe sort of euphemistically as an affordable part of Studio City. Um, we have a lot of I don't like to say homeless problem. I have homeless neighbors. Like to try to be a little more positive. I see the same people, I recognize them. It is a very much, feels a lot more like LA, uh, that part of the city. Um, and so I, it, it is a different part than definitely the Silver Triangle. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely different than Laurel Canyon, but it's still, you know, it's still, it is our, our little city. And so it's kind of shaped my opinions and, and my experiences probably a little bit differently over the last five years. And so, you know, Arch Drive. Hi, uh, Benji Steely Belke. Um, just really quickly, I'm hoping that we get a bathroom break coming up soon. Um, but that, that's not your question, so apologize. Uh, we actually live within uh, walking distance of here as well, off of Sarah Street. Uh, we've lived there for about five years now. We were actually, we used to live in Studio Village um, off of Colfax. Um, so we have kind of both of those um, those parts. Um, I think there actually there's a ton of diversity within within Studio City and a ton of uh, competing interests. Um, I think it's important to get out and about within the community and actually the larger, broader community. I think one of the opportunities and probably for the cultural affairs would be getting involved with the Valley, uh, uh, what is it, cultural arts um, community a little um, more even and getting some more stuff here. Um, I, I know we have a ton here too, but it's just, those are the types of things where to connect us out I think would be, would be beneficial. Okay, Richard Niederberg going for the service organization seat. On your very subject, basically, I've operated two different live theaters in Studio City, so I see members of the community and the public every night seeing the shows. Some shows they liked, some shows they didn't like, but I don't think they were offended. Um, I, because I've lived in Studio City for 65 plus years, I've walked virtually the whole thing, including walking to carpentry school, walking to Walter Reed, walking to the stores. Uh, a lot of the stores have different names. Uh, Ralph's used to be used, the Vons used to be Ralph's, et cetera, et cetera. I'm used to basically walking Studio City. Hi, Denise Wilbing, um, homeowner seat. Uh, I essentially, if you, on the broader scale, I live uh, Ventura and Coldwater. I can walk to the market, I can walk to the restaurants, I can walk downtown. Um, so I see a lot of, you know, the Studio City. Uh, as we've seen, we're a rather diverse group. Um, I also can sit in my backyard and listen to the football games from Harvard Westlake. Um, it's, <laughs> I didn't know it was like that was interesting. Um, they have, their sound system is is awesome. Uh, so uh, you know, I, I get out and about, and uh, you know, I, I visit a lot of Studio City. Did you want to use the restroom? Yes, go for go. it. Does I'm anyone else up here have, have to? Have you guys good for the moment. Hey, you have 45 seconds to answer his question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got a minute, because you already, yeah, you already have 60 minutes already, too. Right. One minute, I'm timing you. All right, um, so anyone else? You're, you're getting close. Rachel's leaving, but okay. Uh, anyone else out here? Let me, t yeah, let me throw one out here, actually. Um, and when he gets back, and I'll, and I'll get you guys again. Don't run away. No, I won't. Just kidding. Okay, so um, what do you feel is the place of the Studio City Neighborhood Council in relation to all the other neighborhood councils in the area here? And I mean, are there places to work together uh, or are there too many differing issues? We just talked about how different it is from Arch Drive to over there at Coldwater and Ventura, but how about now between Studio City and North Hollywood? There are different issues facing uh, these smaller communities. So what do you feel is the place of the Studio City Neighborhood Council in relation to other neighborhood councils in the area. And uh, Christy Cox. And we may have to go around the horn again. Come on. Well, somebody jumped out. Lisa? No. All right. Yanni? Well, we'll get to somebody soon, I promise you. Maybe we can all take bathroom breaks. Eric? Yes. 
All right, so Eric, what, is the, uh, what do you feel is the place of the Studio City Neighborhood Council in relation to other neighborhood councils in the area? Are they okay. different things? Or? Good. So Eric Previn, residential homeowner. My understanding is, is that North Hollywood, we have a couple that are Valley Village Neighborhood Council that are right next to us. And sometimes, I believe at one of our meetings, we heard from the Valley Village community, and it seemed like it made a lot of sense for either public safety and or homelessness committee to link up with those groups because there are no boundaries uh, between, you know, the neighborhood council map is a, a map, but we all are a part of the same, you know, we were talking earlier, it's kind of 40 something thousand in Studio City, but 40,000 in Valley Village, 40,000, you know, so the whole CD2 is 200 and, or 300 and something thousand. 200 whatever the point is is that we are all from the same part of the world and we should be working together where we can I love the idea of uh, collaborating where we could a couple of the um, North Hollywood uh, movies in the park events and things like that but we can do it on a level that I think uh, impacts what we're all doing so I think it'd be great thank you uh, Ben I'll repeat the question for you um, but we will be starting with Rick next uh, the question is what do you feel the place of the Studio City Neighborhood Council is in relation to other neighborhood councils in the area? Studio City offers something slightly different than, let's say, North Hollywood or Sherman Oaks. Do you feel that they can all come together, or are there too many different issues where we will never come together for uh, neighborhood councils? So, Rick, the question goes to you. What do you feel is the place of the neighborhood council uh, here? I, I mean, this is an issue that hasn't come up in my limited experience until this question. But obviously, the neighborhoods close to us face a lot of the same issues. As you go down Ventura Boulevard, you see what SB 50 could do to us. You look at, at, at Encino, which is all high rises along Ventura Boulevard, and I believe Encino has suffered for it. it, it it's, it's, it's not, we're nicer than Encino. Sorry, uh -huh. Encino. Um, but, and it looks like SB 50 is something that will need to be fought to a certain extent. Um, and if it takes banding together to uh, counter some of the bad, <coughs> bad aspects of that and other city measures, then yeah, we should band together. Thank you, Rick. So this is a subject or an area of concern that I brought up at the first forum. Uh, and the reason I did is because when you deal with the council district, we're an advisory board. And to me, that's a latent problem. I think that's always will be the problem until, we, again, to use this kind of buzzword, until we can produce an aggregate effect where the council and our district two representative, Paul, Paul Kerkarian, has to listen to us at a direct level. I think a lot of people forget that his election's coming up next March. And so this is an opportune time to really have loud voices because he has no choice but to listen when there's an election coming up. I would love to see if the concerns are the same in the different neighborhoods within our council district. Because if they are, we really want to fund some of our neighborhood-based initiatives and reinforce some of our needs. You know, producing these bridges is a very efficacious way to get that started. So. Yeah, I'm Alex is Bicky, uh, employee seat. Uh, I agree, and I think you did mention it at the, at the first meeting uh, about having an aggregate. I think it's a great idea. Our problems are pretty uh, common. You know, we have garbage everywhere, terrible streets, our sidewalks are a mess, homelessness, lack of police coverage. Uh, what other wonderful thing? Uh, but, but bridging these uh, neighborhood councils, especially in CD2, where you know our council person was elected with just 18,000 votes mm -hmm. uh we're a lot more than that and i do believe of it's essential to 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 have this aggregate and i think we should have a committee head to actually have these meetings bank is great the valley uh, alliance but we need to we need cd alliances and so we can uh speak as one voice to our councilmen i'd love it yeah, yeah. Okay, Joseph for business. You know, uh, I grew up in Europe, I was watching communism fall down. And I understand one thing, in unity is power. You know, so, you like come together on a whatever level we can and learn from other mistakes. That's a lot of, save a lot of money and a lot of, lot of time. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, as you say, and see, you know, got it, or North Hollywood got it. 
and uh, in a better way, we can become the way showers. As a studio city always been in some better level, why don't we be better level of whatever comes in and help all others to become better as we do? Thank you. So I think, you know, going back, you know, to what we said about how we used to dictate culture by being the place where all the movies were filmed, I think we have a role as a neighborhood council to be an exemplar for other neighborhood councils. And one of the ways to do that is to get ourselves connected with our voters, with our constituents, and with each other. I want City Hall to be afraid of us. And what I mean by that is I want the mayor to call, to, to call upon the neighborhood councils and say, before he goes and you know, proposes an idea. I want the neighborhood councils to be banded together. And I think if we, you know, we build our, our own communications networks or, or you know, metaphorically and, and literally, I think we can have a lot more influence on what, on what City Hall does. They say you can't fight City Hall. You can, but everyone has to do it, you know, together. And I think that's our responsibility as, as, as neighborhood councils. Hi, uh, Benji Steely Belke, uh, so we're at large. Um, so absolutely, we need to connect to the other neighborhood councils. Actually, in my um, campaigning process, um, I came across the fact that um, one of my uh, coworkers, uh, husbands, is on the Woodland Hills Neighborhood Council. I know someone on the North Hollywood Neighborhood Council. Um, also, like a friend is on uh, Andr Adrian Nazarian's um, office, and you find out all these things afterwards. And I think that's part of the problem is that we're not public enough about our our community involvement. Um, and I, th I think that's where the opportunity is. Now, Studio City is a unique city. Uh, I think we have a unique brand that we want to protect and maintain. But at the same time, if we're going to dispel the myth that the valley is basically less than the basin, which I get uh, very upset when people say that, then we, we need to connect to other areas, especially of the, of the, um, the Southern Valley, um, to really dispel that myth and show how, how cool we are. So. Richard Niederberg, going for the um, service organization seat. In 1998, November, we had a, a convention at the convention center of all the people that wanted to get together and form neighborhood councils. It was already going on the ballot, but they didn't know what they are going to do with it. One of the things they decided, basically, was that the individual members that are elected would be, uh, instead of being, have, being a representative democracy, it would be a uh, participatory democracy. It was not really intended for every neighborhood to get together. They wanted to have every neighborhood council deal with the concerns of that particular area. It happened to be the studio city was here first, 1922, um, when they put the post office in. And uh, the other ones kind of grew around us, Sherman Oaks, etc., Universal. And uh, so I think that basically we're doing just fine, but we're not, we don't have to merge our project with other neighborhood councils. Uh, Denise Welbang, homeowner seat. Um, if you look at everywhere, it doesn't matter if you're downtown, North Hollywood, Studio City, we all have similar problems. Uh, our cars get broken into, our houses get broken into, homeless um, streets that are, are nasty. Uh, we do have information um, and we do work uh, periodically with the North Hollywood one of the North Hollywoods. Um, but I've belonged to VANC and I've been to a wide variety of their meetings. And through VANC, all of the all of the neighborhood councils in the valley, it's the Valley Alliance of Neighborhood Councils. All of the neighborhood councils get together and they actually are discussing the the interests of um, what what about you know, where are our police? What's happening with our sidewalks? What's happening? So as a group, um, they're, and they actually have a voice, um, and they are heard. Hey, Nancy Kramer, homeowner's um, seat. Um, we, the city of Los Angeles makes laws that everybody in the city of Los Angeles has to abide by. So we're going to find a lot in common if we have the same common opinion about those laws or those suggested laws, then we hook up with the other neighborhoods and we make a bigger voice and a more powerful voice. And that just makes sense. I think we know them. You know, I'm the last one to be said, so everybody's kind of said this already, but, um, but yeah, we learned from them. I was just on Granada Hills North website because I liked their website, trying to steal ideas off of it. I think, I think there's a lot, of, there's a lot to, to work with and to work separately. 
That was it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, Peter. We're back around to you, buddy. Okay. Go uh, for it. Well, this is, uh, it says it's forum, so am I allowed to have a little back and forth? or? This is a town a hall. <clears throat> I'd say no such thing. Thanks, uh, Anderson. Let's try to ask the question. What's that? Thanks, Anderson. Yeah, I mean, let's let's okay. try to ask the question. I mean, I, I was gonna lead up to like around eight forty-five when I throw the hard ones out. So we well, yeah, yeah, we, you know, well, you got a little bit of time, man. You can throw so a softball. These are softballs. Yeah, yeah, they. Uh, can I make one statement, please? For the tech guys, uh, if you want my vote, uh, about seven months ago, I t uh, took uh, on this crazy project. There is a new uh, website that has been completed for the neighborhood council, and it has it's been sitting dormant for seven months. So it was built on WordPress. It's all been updated. So it just needs a hosting place and somebody to go in and go a little massage. So if any of you guys want to talk to me and you can, uh, I'll give you the keys tomorrow and you guys can go have fun with it. So um, I've been involved, uh, uh, not as a board member, never, wouldn't do that. Uh, four years uh, uh, in and around neighborhood council because of, uh, we'll call it a NIMBY things. It's something that happened in my backyard trying to protect my property rights. Um, and I've seen different versions of boards. And one thing I've noticed is some boards uh, peacefully coexist and work together and others don't. Um, there was a, a, a board, a previous iteration of a board that, um, thought it was a good idea to change the rules about term limits. And it was right as they were about to be termed out, they decided to change the term limits. How do you all feel about term limits? Um, do you think that you should just do your two, two years and, and you know maybe just serve on a committee? Or do you think it's a good idea for board members to be able to stay um, for years and years on neighborhood council. Term limits. Term limits. Jonathan, first. So the 22nd, you talked about, oh, I was thinking about the 22nd Amendment. So you said term limits. That's a very loaded thing because I think people are always in favor of term limits when they don't like the incumbency. The uh. incumbents. And so um, I don't think anyone, uh, well, I'm not, I, you know, I personally think that, you know, term limits can limit you know, the, the question of, of democracy versus a republic, you know, you could go down that rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. I think term limits can sometimes limit the will of the people. Um, where term limits come in play is when there is questions about the legitimacy of an election. Thank God we don't have problems like that in this country. Um, but I, I personally don't think term limits are necessarily, you know, necessary if, if people are engaged and involved. Uh, you know, I don't think at this scale we have people buying elections, um, and so I, I, I don't think term limits are necessary. It's personal, basically, in my opinion. Thank you. Hey, hey Benjamin uh, Spongy Steely Belke. Um, so first on the WordPress thing, um, get your requirements, and then also figure out a support model. I think it's the key thing, because otherwise every website will become dormant. Um, secondly, like on, on term limits, um, for me personally, um, after two years. Um, I, uh, I feel like I've done my part and then I'm ready to probably move on or do something different. Like in, within my job, I've consistently after two years basically had my list of things I needed to do and then move on. And as a general piece, um, I agree with Jonathan here. I think that they're not necessarily um, necessary in all circumstances. There are jobs that are going to take longer. But for me, it's like um, I see some immediate opportunities that I'd like to execute on and that's why I'm running. With the neighborhood senior rep, obviously, I benefit by not having to <laughs> run so far. <laughs> Philosophically, though, I think that as long as you have frequent elections, term limits are not are probably not the issue because they can throw the bums out if anything you don't like. And the more often elections, the more opportunities the public has to do so. Yeah. Um, Denise uh, Wilbank, uh, homeowner seat. Um, there's good and bad things about uh, the uh, having having a limited uh, term. Um, the good thing is you might be able to get, you know, you get new people in constantly. Um, and the bad thing is you might find there are some people that are actually very helpful and uh, they know a lot, of, a lot about what's going on. Um, so, I mean, it's good and it's bad. I watched um, the group that uh, 
got rid of the term limits so they could be, um, actually it was after the fact, um, they found out that the term limits, they couldn't be on their seats and they changed the term limits uh, so they could stay. Um, it was interesting. Uh, okay, uh, but I, I can't say I'm for or against. I think by having elections every two years, um, we will have churn and we will bring new people in. Hey, Nancy Kramer, homeowner seat. Um, I'm actually just retiring this year from being on the steering committee of my choir. And I've been on it for 10 years and I'm leaving because I feel stale. I don't have any new energy. I don't have any new enthusiasm. I have no new ideas. And I think other people need to start taking over and doing it. So I think there's like, there has to be, but I love the idea that Mr. Niederberger knows Burger, I always say that every time. He knows everything that's happened with the studio between the two. I mean, that's important to have on a, a resource that knows the history and knows why things worked or didn't work in the past. I think that's important too. So I know that I will self-term myself if, it's, if, it's, if there's no term limits, but I also think to do a four-year plan is important to do it, you know, to do a plan now for what it, what's the Olympics gonna look like for Studio City. I, I think that long-range planning that does not a two-year goal work with, you know? You need to have a little bit longer term to plan that far out. I don't know what I'm saying. Eric Previn, res a residential homeowner. I, I feel that um, term limits uh, can be okay and are kind of important if you want to have a real um, feeling because all of us who serve as a board member could easily serve on a committee and make room for somebody else to serve on the board. The problem in this particular neighborhood council was, in fact, the reason why many of us ran last time was because we were clear that they had changed the term limits to, to make them go away and stay longer. And there's been a history of self-protective activity among incumbent boards. Now, as a member of an incumbent board, how can I say that with a straight face? The answer is because we have now a third, we had three years, it's supposed to be two years. After two years, I was against being extended for a third year because of what I believe Mr. Niederberg said. You want to give the community an opportunity to throw the bums out. And it's very hard to throw the bums out when you can't vote for just the candidate you like. You have to vote in your lane. So that's why, you know, some of us worked in the end of the last year to change that, try to get it approved. The city said no, so we'll try later. But I, I'm for people serving for a limited amount of time. Thank you. Obviously, the trade-off is between a corruption and complacency and knowledge and experience. And I, I don't see a lot of complacency or corruption. I mean, the stakes are, are really, I mean, per, the, the budget is $42,000. There, there, there's not room for a whole lot of corruption here. <laughs> so I, I think it's okay without term limits. You know, if, if developers started coming in and getting cozy and stuff, but that's... What I see is skepticism about development, and so no term limits. I believe as long as there is a fair voting that is distributed to the public and disseminated we, and people know about these elections, that's more than satisfactory. It is so hard in sports to find a team that synergizes and plays well together and has a strong leadership. And in no sport would you take that team voluntarily and break it up. It just doesn't happen because it's so difficult to do. So if you get to that point, that's great. And we should continue. However, until you get to that point, hopefully these elections play a bigger and bigger role in the community and people know about them so they can make that decision. Um, and it's an unbiased decision if the information is distributed appropriately. However, I know oftentimes people err on the side of experience over inexperience, especially on a local level, and I think there cannot be that fear if we want to have a progressive, effective board. Also, I'm going to be taking off to put my kid to bed. Um, I appreciate you guys. You guys are all pretty amazing, actually, tonight. So each of you are extremely well spoken. So I enjoyed all that, and the questions are great. And I hope to see you guys all soon. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. And again, for anyone who's already left or if you haven't seen somebody, you can go to the YouTube page for Studio City Neighborhood Council uh, and just check out their answers. Thanks, Adam. Um, I'm going to, I've got to leave at 8 o'clock. Uh, so you got 12 minutes, pal. <laughs> so you got to answer this question. Okay, and any hardballs, bring them on. 
Right. So, okay. Uh, but in answering uh, the question, you know, we're talking about two different arenas, in my opinion. Here we have a volunteer entity. Uh, it's not that easy to get people to come and work uh, and donate their time. So on one hand, I believe ideally it's nice to churn things and so no one gets complacent and, and cozy with developers or whatever it is. Uh, maybe a hybrid of, of, of something like maybe uh, rotating the chair people of our committees. Therefore, nobody has a direct inf uh, uh, influence, but yet we still have the fiscal assets coming and, and doing what we do. So, uh, but on a national level, yeah, I think cutting off people's uh, ability to lobby and do all the other BS that they do after they serve, even in our council offices here, which is dis disgraceful. Uh, I would I would definitely Im Im impose that. So some it has to make sense, and I'm all for it. Okay, Joseph for business. I personally don't like the word limits at all. So, and I really I'm not really feel confident to change anything about the council which runs certain time for certain certain way which is running. Yet I know that time is changing, and we are changing, and there should be always a place of some wild card which says, hey, maybe this time is a good thing to do this instead of following some strict rule for years and years. And thank you. Back to the top. you got one more question left in you, so you go for it. So I know some of you haven't been on the neighborhood council and you haven't really seen how the money's spent, or it's not much, right? Um, and some of the events that have been taking place have three people at them. Um, I'm wondering if you have an idea of what you would spend the money on. I've been on the receiving end because I've represented community organizations where the neighborhood council has actually not funded community-based organizations and projects. So Mike, of course I'm trying to bias the question and have you answer what I want you to hear. But I, I'm wondering if you have ideas, like I said, some of you guys haven't been on, so you don't know what in the world you would spend it on. But if you have ideas, I'd like to hear them. Oh, right. point, point of order. Um, is there other limitations on the, I mean, because like, I, I have no idea in terms of how neighborhood council is structured in terms of fiduciary. Are there limitations on what the neighborhood council can spend money on? Eric. Well, I think there's community, um, improvement grants that we can use for things that like a bench or a tree or and there's neighborhood purpose grants which are for other kinds of gifts and those are the two main ways but then the board can have its own events that it produces that it funds um and is that close to the way and and obviously that's what we do you know that's the the basic gist of it the, you know historically we've spent some money um you know, with the beautification groups, with uh, the homeless alliance recently, with you know the schools, um, those are the ones that pop in my head. But but and events, uh, you know, some of which are very well attended and got the sheriff and the sheriff's rival during the election, and you know almost a hundred people at one of them, you know, and others which are more sparsely attended because there's not a big you know, leader at the front. But I'm going first now, it feels like, because... No, that was actually... No, that, that, was, that, was, that was actually... That was for Ben's question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Whoever's so in my right hand. The, uh, That's right. I mean, does that help? Formal no, no, budget that helps, because okay. it's like, right. you have to know what your limits are, right? So... Yeah, yeah. And again, you just okay. getting on the board as well. Some of these yeah. folks know a little okay. bit more, so that's why some of these questions are going to be tougher. Um, Raymond is not here. So it's not... It wasn't you, Eric. Okay. That's why I was just... Fair looking for I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm happy to address it. Because of... Richard. Okay. What's the question? <laughs> How would you spend the money? How, spend the money? How do you spend the money? Where do you feel the money could be spent? My biggest bias is to spend the money within Studio City, whether it is buying food for these or printing, or it is whatever we're going to do. The event should be in Studio City, for example. We do the Luminari every year, which is on the extreme eastern end of Studio City. We have stuff. We had the stuff, stuff at the um, garden along the river, which is on the extreme west end of Studio City. We have this in the middle of Studio City, and we have the uh, uh, the park. So we try to do it in Studio City. It's important to do so. It's not mandated, but I think it's a matter of good faith. If we spend the money within Studio City, we've given uh, Rio Vista High School, uh, Grammar School, some a lot of hard stuff with the the uh, their 
their um, pantries are going to be there a long time. The gates we paid for and the locks for Carpenter, that's going to be here a long time. So I'm more biased toward long term permanent improvements. Uh, Denise Wilbang, uh, full motor seat. Um, we've given a lot of different things um, to some schools. Um, we gave, uh, let's see, uh, Walter Reed. We constantly help uh, the guy, the uh, carpenter, um, and you know, we schools at the moment seem to be the big thing. Um, but uh, we have worked together with uh, North Hollywood um, uh, Neighborhood Council, and we partially funded. You know, we paid some, they paid some, and we bought one of those big signs. The police wanted a big sign that said. Uh, you know the ones that you see. You know that there's going to be some construction. You know, use other use other way. Um, we've also uh, oh, the North Hollywood Police Station. They wanted to do some revamping. They had uh, and they needed X amount of dollars. We gave them money. Uh, so it's a, it's more of a community outreach and helping build something or or you know benches. You know, kids need to have uh, benches to sit on. They have to just eat. So that's what we do. This is kind of an important topic to me, Nancy, from um, homeowners. First of all, you, when you get on a budget committee, you hear the committee's advocate for why they want the funds and what they want them for, and then that will sway opinion. But coming out of the gate, not being on a budget committee, it seems to me that dollars have got to be first spent to reaching out to the stakeholders in Studio City so they know we exist, they know what we do, and how we can advocate for, for them with our government. And that's our primary purpose, I believe. So if that's the case, then I would love to advocate for the homeless committee to get some of that money out of LA City to really make a difference for the homeless in probably a greater valley area sort of look. Um, but if we can't reach our stakeholders, we got no power, we got, we got no communication, then we're handing out little benches and little thises and little thases, and I, just, I think that's a misuse. I think we really need to be able to reach our stakeholders first. Eric Previn, residential homeowner, and you know, I think that we should, it, it's a painful reality, but one of the great accomplishments of the time that I've been on the Neighborhood Council is not my own, but of volunteers who have made recordings of our meetings and made them visible for our constituents, and people watch them, believe it or not. And I think that that's a good use of money, and it's unfortunate it's all volunteer. You know, I'm not looking to bulk up on equipment, but that kind of outreach, and also the kind of outreach where we take information from the city that we have access to about our homeless crisis, about our public safety issues, about our neighborhood parks, and share that with our constituents. That is a very good use of funds, because our constituents don't know you know, us, but they do know about their park. And, their, and if we share with them information, bring them in, and get that... Um, dialogue going, you know, we can make an impact on the outcomes of these things. And that takes money. Um, it just takes money. It takes money to, you know, uh, we don't do enough uh, outreach. And I think we're working on that. Um, and, you know, a lot of ideas up and down this time have been about that. So I look forward to doing some of that. And here comes Janine. Thank you. Rick, outreach and branding. The whole world knows Beverly Hills. The whole world knows Hollywood. I worked in Hollywood for 12 years, and I used to feel so sorry for tourists who'd come thousands of miles to see a crap neighborhood. <laughs> Studio City is America's city because so much stuff is filmed here. My wife and I get so excited when we see, dead to me, Big Five right there, The Rookie, Big Five right, you know, Ventura Place, they use that street all the time. Um, kidding. I don't know my street, kidding. Kidding? I don't know that. Oh, okay, but like so much, and that knowledge in the out there in the world brings business to us, and business that we will need as the entertainment industry tends will disperse. Um, we need to make sure that people want to keep using our city and visiting our city. Hi, Alex is Vicky, uh, employee seat. Uh, trying to keep uh, my hand up. Okay, uh, well, actually, I believe that the money that we have definitely should go through outreach and technology. We've got an incredibly exciting, uh, we're on the cusp of incredible things happening with, with outreach on a technical level. We need to work on that. My heart says, yeah, give some of that money uh, to some of the schools that come to us and say, we need a bench, we need this and that. 
but I, I, I have to agree, uh, you know, that's not our job. Our job is not to be a stopgap for the city of Los Angeles. If they're failing miserably and making our city beautiful, then let it come to that. Let's go to them and say, you guys stink. You're not doing what you need to do, and we want you out of office. But for us to be that kind of filler, that's a cop-out. That's not our job. We just have a little piggy bank. We can't let mom and dad and come smash it to pay uh, you know, the, 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 the gas bill. That's not fair. Even though the intention is there, I don't believe we should be doing that and keep it all within us to, to out for outreach. Thank you. Okay, Joseph, for business. I would start with 10% put to sort of charity, but, but charity that way we really feel that makes some difference. You know, if somebody really is about doing something which other people notice, send it there, right there. And then use the rest again, it's a capitalism, right? If we put it somewhere, it's gonna get accumulated. So really choosing the, uh, the areas which makes profitable. What is, what is, as you mentioned, the industry, movie, or just small businesses, or anybody who, who, like, I would aim the people, you know, not really businesses, but aim people. If you know somebody, entrepreneur in your neighborhood who, who manage a lot, give him 10, 10, 10, 000, he's gonna make 100,000 from it. And that's the way I would use it. So for the first 19, uh, years of my life from uh, 1977 to 1996, I lived in the Detroit metro area. It was an, it was an area with horrible brand identity, except for the car business. Uh -huh. and, 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 you know, what's funny is when they, they rebooted it, I right, saying made in Detroit, made in Studio City. You know, I think branding is important, geo-targeting Facebook ads. I want to see, come visit beautiful Studio City. Um, talking about the website. By the way, I own an internet service provider. I can give us free hosting for life. Talk to me afterwards, um, just for the neighborhood council, not for everybody watching the video. Um, <laughs> it doesn't make that much money. Um, but I think that's really, really important is that we need to make this, a de like I said, a destination, a place made in Studio City. That should be our, you know, our, our campaign, made in Studio City. It's that simple. Hi, uh, Benjamin Steely Becca, also go by Benji. Um, so I think uh, there are a couple things here. I think branding is absolutely essential. I think we have to do that, but we also have to engage with our community. Um, so the way though, I think that's the best way of engaging in the community is having um, an equal part with these uh, community partners. For instance, like if before we're giving a grant, um, there has to be like enough um, investment on behalf of the organization. Um, and actually it would be more like, I think Nancy mentioned it, like directing a lot of funds, being that advocate, as well as like events. Like I think there are, there are a lot of opportunities, people who want to get involved. Like Studio City can um, shine the light on those things, provide some funding for snacks, for get, uh, spread out the word, and get people to show up, to then, and then money will follow to those organizations. But I don't think like we want to you know, spend on our piggy bank for just any um, old reason without that. So, Thank you. Janine. Uh, Alex, I do hope you can stay for one more question, buddy. Janine, the question to you, hopefully you can, please. I'll ask a question next. And Janine, the question to you right now, what everyone else has been answering, and welcome, thank you for coming. Um, I apologize, working. Do you have an idea of uh, what the money is, is spent on or where you want the money to go uh, that is allotted to the Studio City Neighborhood Council? Was that an effective uh, yeah, summary? So the money that's allotted to the Studio City Neighborhood Council, where does it go? Where do you want it to go? You know, I, I'm part of the outreach com committee and so um, obviously as people have, have mentioned, our tr outreach is, is really important and, and it is really important for people to know that we are as special a community as we are. And so with the technology, we rebooted doing Instagram, but I, I had actually wanted to spend some um, of our budget money to have a social media person because that is huge. A gentleman who was a member of our board, Craig Radow, kind of did our Instagram, but it's not the same as having someone who specifically does social media outreach. And I think that's everything that's been mentioned. And, and that was one of the things that I would have really liked, just that if you're putting Studio City in or if you're putting, you know, um, movies in the park in, Studio City comes up because we happen to have a beautiful movies in the park. So, and I talked too long. I had other thoughts. But Sorry, we, we have a minute. I should I have told you that. 
At least it's the longest part. All right, let me throw out a question here. Um, if you don't mind, I, I'll get to you right next because I know that Alex has got to leave as well. And Sorry, it's yeah. because I saw something last week. Now, as somebody who's spent a lot of years uh, riding with police, I know that there's a disconnect between what the citizens uh, think the police uh, should do and can do and what they actually can do or should do. So my question um, for you all is, and I'm Jenny not picking a name out of the hat, you know this, uh, to answer this is, what do you feel the role in the police is since we have so few police available to us in Studio City, which has been a running thing in the neighborhood council for a while. We have so few police um, uh, for us patrolling in this area. What do you feel is the responsibility of the police versus the responsibility of the citizens here? Um, Janine, look at that. I get to talk again. <laughs> <laughs> One minute too, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, it, the police situation in the East Valley is very disturbing. And I literally, personally, just after having 18 years of, of alarm security monitoring service on my house that I put in as soon as I moved in, canceled the monitoring service part because our senior lead officers said that, that our police are so stretched, they do not really respond. As a woman who lives alone and just lost my really big dog, this makes me nervous. So obviously, um, I think that our, our police need to be involved in any crime that's going on in the city, but that should really have a focus be on the residents. So I've just been told that it's kind of a waste of my money to have my monitoring service. So that's kind of how I feel. Well, thank you. I need more police. Thank you. Richard Niederberg, uh, service organization rep. I think that the problem can be subdivided into we need more civilian personnel. The pension cost of, of foreign officers is outrageous. We could get regular city employees or new ones to actually stay in the thing, answer the phone, do the filing to get all the sworn officers that we have on the street. I think it's important, basically. I don't care if they are Pro Patrolman 3, Sergeant, Lieutenant, whatever. Get them on the street, basically, you know. Yes, we need more. Economically, it doesn't seem to be happening. So we need just to backfill with some civilian employees running the paperwork at the desk. Thank you. Denise. Denise Wolving, um, homeowner. Uh, there's a big problem. <laughs> we don't, nobody has enough police, except maybe in New York. And uh, they got thousands of them. Um, technically, by the Constitution, we are all entitled to police protection. Um, but that is all of us. As single individuals, we're not entitled, I've been told. Uh, the, the police department has their metrics, and they, they skew everything to where the crime is. So we don't have that much crime. While we do have break-ins and people burglarizing our houses, it doesn't let go to the level of, say, the crime at Van Nuys. So all the cops were Van Nuys, and we're kind of like, we have a car, two car, um, you know, and that's supposed to look at do whatever. Um, and as someone who has called the police about a serious incident or two, uh, two hours after you call them, uh, you know, you'll get a phone call, can you seal, seal them? And I'm like, no, I can't see them. Um, you know, and if you follow them, you'll get arrested because now you're a vigilante. <laughs> we have major problems. <laughs> Thank you. <Denise. laughs> Piggybacking, Nancy from the homeowners. Um, it is it is a community issue. You have to know your neighbors, and that's the one thing that we can do as the Studio City Neighborhood Council is to facilitate through events, through meetings like this, is for people to meet and know their neighbors. And I can tell you on my block, I've stopped a robbery across the street. My husband's chased on a guy that was in his truck and trying to take something. I mean, we, we, we watch out for each other because we know our neighbors. We, we made a special effort to meet them. And that is what makes a community safe, I think. Eric Previn, residential homeowner, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with Nancy. That is the, the best defense is to be vigilant but it is of concern when you call the police that you know you, you expect a response time that is 
connected to a rescue of some kind when you're scared. And, you know, that doesn't always happen. You have to really amp it, ramp it up. And, you know, they, they are shorthanded. The facts are the facts. There's too few uh, individuals available. And, you know, I agree with Niederberg that sworn officers should be doing sworn work and civilians should be doing paperwork. They, they have plans to do that, but they also have a mounting... Uh, in 2022, $45 million is going to be piled on to the $1.5 billion um, pension liability for existing. So, you know, they have some real problems. So it's all the more important that we figure out a way to liaise with Sean, who's our, se our senior lead, and others to get, uh, you know, the best responses we can. I agree with everybody that L.A. is under police. New York City has something like four times as many police per capita, which makes the police here feel like they're under siege. Um, so it is a form of outreach. It's become, we, it's not nice to be a busybody or a tattletale, but we have to be because we have to look at what's, we have to know our neighbors, we have to, re, we have to watch what's going on with them. And Sean is great. My wife is always emailing with him and and that's outreach to let people know that we have this community liaison officer and he loves to communicate and know with us and find out through us what's happening in the neighborhood. Well, Alex is picky. Again, employee seat. Um, well, you know what? This is all great. I love community policing. I love putting my life in danger when, <laughs> when people that we pay uh, in our community to do so professionally can't do it, which is unacceptable. The problem is that we're always going to be short-staffed because of the of the mechanics of the pension and the pay system. Uh, if we get more money for our police or our fire, whoever it is that works in our city, it will all be siphoned off to the amount of people that we have vis-a-vis -vis over time. It will not be brought on for new boots on the ground. It's just the way the contracts are, are made. There has to be leadership in our city that will attack this to finally fix the hole in the boat instead of hiring more people to just bail out more water out of the boat. The boat is broken, which is the way our city has been made up and our, our public unions are made up. If we can't fix that, you will never, ever see more policing uh, on our streets. It just won't happen. So press your councilman and our city. Sorry, I've got to go. I'm excited. If I can just say, to be running with all of you, I think you guys are all awesome. And uh, I wish us all luck. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Okay, take care. Joe, give it two seconds. But, uh, all right. And we are coming into the home stretch, everybody. Just so you all know. I'll get to your question next. Joe? Okay, Joseph for business. Well, police, I, I believe that it's a big, big cookie to eat. And, you know, as, as many of you say, it's, it's our responsibility. You know, I've got two hands and they on the end of my shoulder and that's what I do for myself. And the more we understand our responsibility for us, the less police are gonna have to do and the more, more help they can get us. Maybe we can help them. You know, that's my opinion. Thank you. Jonathan Kelpfeld, at large uh, candidate. Um, I don't have a lot of experience personally with the police. Um, I lived in San Francisco for about four years and one of my neighbors was a police officer and so I used to get all the stories. Uh, but one of the things that I think I, I've noticed, especially in our area, you don't see the, the crime that you see in other places. You, you, know, you see homelessness, which you know, of course the police get asked to deal with a lot. And I think there's a lot of, of the, the root cause of the issues we have might be you know, mental illness related. So I'd like to see you know, police with more understanding of mental illness and how to address those concerns. I mean, obviously they can't all be you know, psychotherapists, but I think having some, you know, some sense of where their, you know, where their knowledge is. Unfortunately, this isn't my bailiwick, so I don't really have a lot of, you know, personal experience with it. That That's probably where I begin, though. Hi, uh, Benjamin Steely belke also go by Benji. Um, I'm very grateful that I wasn't the first one to ask this question, um, so I've been able to give it some thought. Um, so I think the, the role of police, especially in a community like Studio City, is to help us mitigate risk. 
Um, there are a lot of things that we can do probably to make us like less attractive to burglars. One of the things that we've done in our house is added like ring cameras. Unless we know that kind of thing to, to help us out, then there's really no point. I mean, like you can have as many people as you want to, but unless you can protect your own area, that's, that's the other thing. The other piece is actually to be a vital part of the community as a symbolic representative. Um, I think it is important. Um, I always get a little intimidated by police, but I think it's important uh, for them to be a part of um, those community items because when people know they're there, when the presence is there, then um, then people change their other attitudes towards that, and not just as a fear, but as a um, as a partner. So, thank you. We are at the top of the key again. Go for it, uh, Melanie Winter. I'm a resident of Studio City for 20 years. Um, and uh, have a business here as well. Um, quick comment and then my question. Um, I, outreach I think is super important and I would love to see the website functioning better because it's just a hot mess and that's like your, that's step one and it's just embarrassing for Studio City to not be providing the basics on our website and I cringe. Um, so I hope that the new board will take that on as job one because um, that's your foundation for your outreach. You, you reach people and they'll go to a website and it's not there, you lose people. So, um, In terms of the funding, I would really like to, to see, this is maybe a weird thing to say, less of our uh, grant money go to schools. Our schools, you know, <laughs> they're funded by our tax base. Our tax base is doing very well and our parents are super involved and you don't go to Carpenter and cannot contribute a significant amount to the Carpenter committee and they are fine and dandy, thank you. So um, yeah, I'd rather see that spread around a little bit. Um, that's, those are my comments. Um, and my question is, for all these issues, I, it, my, I've, I've not seen a lot of efficiency with the Neighborhood Council in producing and submitting uh, CISs and in actively engaging with our representatives on mm. these many of these issues that community cares about. And I'm, you know, if, if we're not seen as something more than a booster group to, to build business and brand in Studio City, I don't think that's what a government, because we're a quasi-government organization, and I just don't think it's our job to build brand and business in an already prospering community as much as it is to, to engage with our representatives. And I don't see this neighborhood council as having done that effectively. So what would you all do to make it easier for committees who propose motions and CISs to actually get those through to the board and get them acted on more quickly? That's what I want to see. I want to see what we're going to do in terms of being an effective community representative liaison bridge to our local government on issues that are, from what I've heard um, in some of these uh, forums, oh, that's too big for us. I, I, I want to see how you can serve folks who can't go to City Hall on issues they care about, they care about that come to committees and come to this board. So what would you all do? Point of order, what's a CIS? Uh, what is it? It's a community impact statement. So okay. Thank you. Councils, um, Weigh in on um, council files. Okay, thank you. So uh, with that, Denise. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, weighing in on council files. Um, the uh, committees send uh, motions uh, to the board, um, and we have not until we, but <clears throat> our, our new secretary. Uh, we have not had a secretary, which has kind of hamstrung us in getting everything out to the people at certain, you know, and then nobody wants to be the secretary because, oh my God, it takes too much time. Um, now that we have a secretary, we're on the road to getting everything done. Uh, but you get um, a wide variety of motions, um, and the information needs to go to the president you know, once we voted on it and they have to sign a letter and we have to send it off to planning and we have to send it off to wherever and you, you put it on um, the website for the city. Um, that has been taking a very long period of time and we just haven't got it done. Yeah. So now, that, now that we have people and people who want to be involved um, and get some of these things done, we'll get them. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, Nancy Kramer, homeowner seat. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm right on board with you on most of that. Um, and and yes, I just tried to update, get rid of Barbara Boxer, 
and it's they said we don't we can't we can't control our website we have to someone else has control over our website it takes a week i couldn't even do it i've been for two months i've been trying to figure out how to do it but i got it now next week you'll see barber box are gone um and i think you don't know about stuff because i think our website is so bad and our community our outreach is so bad i think it is happening in the committee level because the motions are coming through in the last i've been secretary since we're like three months maybe now so motions are coming through and they're going out and they're getting approved i just don't think you know about it because our outreach isn't telling you that's my thought and you can't see the website no we can't do anything <laughs> can, I, can i make a comment because the website's being yeah. There is a website completed. I know, I'm talking Re to you afterwards. Re redone. So talking it's just great. sitting there offline. You need someone to put it online well, that's right. and play it. <laughs> that should help you, yeah, okay. That's right. So yeah, a word about community, those are great comments. A word about community impact statements. When the neighborhood councils measure how the, or the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment measures how a neighborhood council is doing, what they used to do is count the number of community impact statements. So there was a premium on doing a lot of them. But when you looked at what they were doing, they were just rubber stamping support for what council members were thinking up. So in Studio City, since I've been around, we've been you know, trying to take positions that are uh, informative and telling them, hey, that's a bad idea. So that's what we told them about scanning for affiliation. We were right, we sent one off, we did one. We did one on campaign finance. You know? So without being defensive, I think we can do more of that. Um, but I think that community impact statements should really come from, you know, a place of either the people want to, you know, be heard on a particular issue or we decide when we learn about something that this is outrageous and let's send a message so that we're educating as we're, you know, learning. And so that I think is uh, the future for us. And I don't think that the number is as important as the quality. No, no, I know you're not. I'm saying that they had in the past made a premium bill. Thank you. All right. To submit to the city, to the LA City Council, you have to have a clear position. And on some stuff, we do. We know that we don't want planes fly, doing a single flight path every three minutes. We want the flight path spread out. Uh, we know that. I think. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna decide that SB 50 has some provisions that we don't want. But for stuff like homelessness, we have to figure out what our thoughts are. Because. Uh, and for transportation, for, you know, deciding, you know, because we're divided about, you know, whether Whitsitt should be hauling ass at 48 miles an hour or driving reasonably at 28 miles an hour. And so, you know, part of it is coming up with definite recommendations. Part of it is formulating those recommendations. Thank you, Ray. Joe. Yeah, Joe, for business. I believe it's, again, your presence right here, asking the question, putting it on the light, make it all of us aware there is the thing that works. And everybody who has that need to really express himself through this way of being helped with this council, he has a right to come in, put his, put his voice out, and you know, follow the rules, whatever that means. Thank you. Jonathan Kaupfeld, at large uh, stakeholder. Um, I think one of the things that'll really help us, and, and this is what brought me, got me interested in this about, I don't know, three weeks ago, is I think that we can borrow a lot of the like communications technology that people use in agile software development to interact with each other. Before you got here, one of the things I mentioned was setting up a Slack chat for the neighborhood council so that we can talk. Fine, I know, a lot of people have strong opinions on it, but within this organization, someone's got an idea at three in the morning and they want to put that out there, we don't have to wait till the next meeting or send an email. And I think there's that. And it's also easier to engage with um, constituents. But I think one of the things I said um, in, in, is, is make City Hall afraid of us. You know, I think if we have, you know, we have good ideas, sometimes the quantity, I think there used to be a belief that quantity was a quality of its own. And C CIS, I guess, sounds like that was a metric that was used a lot, but, yeah, I, I, that's the best I can do. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of experience, but that's how I would proceed, so. Thank you. Hi, uh, Benjamin Steely belki also go by Benji. Um, so with these community impact statements, as far as I can surmise, again, I don't have a lot of experience either, but um, I, th I think it's important to identify what um, the board and, and stakeholders are very passionate about, clearly articulate um, where the, 
the board feels like uh, the board's role is in all of those things, and then focus energy on those specific community impact statements um, of quality, and then also uh, follow up and, and drive that home. Because if we want to see some of the, and that's where it kind of ties back into engaging more with the community. So if we have specific needs of, of council members, we need to like drive that home, publicize it, and then just follow up and continue to follow up. Um, but but we can only do that with certain a certain amount of things, and that's kind of where I think a, like some sort of uh, stakeholder um, survey and or engagement and a way to define metrics for that, so that we know what to prioritize. Hi, Janine Milne, a service organization. I have only been on the board a little under a year, but I will say in my time there, um, our public safety committee uh, really got a tremendous amount of communication to Krikorian's office regarding more police officers. And in fact, they were added. The last we heard from Krikorian is that they were needing to go through a certain training before they could be out on the streets. Eric started through his government affairs committee along with, with Brian, um, an amazing public forum that this is part of that during the October elections or the November elections rather, had all of our elected officials debating one another with the community invited. So I think that there's been a lot of stuff, not necessarily in exactly the way that you're mentioning, but I've seen a lot of communication with council and engagement of the community through the board with elected officials. Thank you, Richard. Richard Niederberg, service organization rep. Um, last night I went to a VANC meeting, Valley Alliance and Neighborhood Councils, and they do not speak with one voice. Yes, we represent 34 of the 99 neighborhood councils all in the valley, but they don't agree on most anything. So you can't have a super CIS go out. I'm happy to have inherited the thing from Denise. She went to a lot of these bank meetings. They're very, very long and somewhat boring, but uh, that's the way life is, you know. And so um, every neighborhood council has to put out whatever they think is important and don't expect agreement from the rest of the valley or the rest of anywhere as to what should be done where. Because if, you, if the airplanes aren't going to fly here, they're going to fly over some other neighborhood yeah. council. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Uh, we have one more question. You want to go for it? Oh, Jump on up there. Uh, this has to do with outreach. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. Is that passing notes in class? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Passing yeah. notes in class. Oh, okay. Go for it, Peter. Uh, this has to do with outreach. Uh, the latest iteration of outreach basically had outreach dumped on them because nobody else wanted to do it. So, uh, you know, uh, it's great that there's tech people because that's really um, what it needs. Um, but if you, uh, if the board decides to do an event or there's things that come up in the community that need a person to go man a booth, and let's say it's of something you have absolutely no interest, as a board member, will you commit to make sure that um, these events are covered and, and you might go sit at a table and hand out swag or whatever it is so that you don't leave another committee hanging? Because that's what's been happening. And I realize that this board is, you know, do, we don't have enough hands. There's not enough people to do everything. But um, one of the things is just make sure that all these events are covered. So that's it. Man, I was just listening to your question. I wasn't even picking a name. It was just your voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Richard Adams not here. Um, Rick Rosner. Okay. Um, the question is, will you cover things, outreach events, if there's a thing at a farmer's market? Anyway. Yes, as, as a board member, you guys um, conceivably should be the first people to step up uh, because there are not enough hands anyways. Would you, even yeah. if you're not um, interested or concerned with that particular thing, um, just yeah, step there up? Are and 15 board members, and if you include committee members who aren't part of the board, that's probably close to 30. Mm -hmm. That's enough to probably, if, yeah, you, it's reasonable. Are you going to spend an extra hour a month on average doing stuff yeah can see doing that also richard did you say that the post office went in here in 1922 
that's when the post office decided, that's when the department decided, we need a post office here, and they named it Studio City. They so the we're, Studio we're City. three years away from our centennial. We yeah. The board should look at some kind of 100-year deal. There you go. Which doesn't answer that question, but still. But it's a good, it's a good deflection. Okay. And Joseph for business. For me personally, I'm willing to do that. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay to serve, and you know, sometimes, from my opinion, this life is experiment. We are human beings having incredible moment by moment by moment now and now and now. You know, my attitude is enjoy it. I will enjoy it. Sure. Well, one quick thing on this is that I have 123 videos online at the Neighborhood Council, and these are great moments because if you get elected and you don't serve, I will remember this. <laughs> I will find the video and I will send it to the board. So. He's not kidding. Yeah, <laughs> he really is not. It's my attitude. <laughs> Joe, you got 30 more seconds, buddy. Do you want them? I, I'm just, this is, um, I put it in my attitude, okay? My attitude is to serve. If you put me in a park and they say, hey, Joseph, do it, I'll say, I'll do it. Thank you, John. So I, I share custody of two really adorable children that no one can say no to. Uh, and uh, they're, they're eight and five right now. But I remember uh, in, uh, in, when I was running for, for Congress in 2012, my daughter, who was two at the time, was holding up a sign. So I, to, to answer your question, yes, and I plan on using child labor as much as possible. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can delete that video, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, Benjamin uh, Sealy Belke. So I think it's essential, the first thing is to make a list and to try to get as many people their email list and, and engaged as possible and with frequent touch points because you want a wide uh, pool of people. The other thing is like any event can be fun if you find something fun about it. Um, I think it's essential to have more than one person at some of these things. Otherwise, it's just a drag and I hate to go to those kind of things because I do a lot of that stuff. Um, with work, um, also making it uh, communal. Um, so having a specific um, way to engage people as opposed to trying to push because that takes out too much energy. And then whether I'd go if I'm not interested, well, um, it's, it's sometimes hard to do things that are, that are meaningful, so I kind of force things. And as my husband can attest, uh, I put things on the calendar um, about mon many months in advance, and then I, I just go to them. And I would drag him along too. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janine Milne, Service Organization. Um, yeah, I definitely have done my P22 events and my emergency preparedness summit and, um, and certainly would continue on. Okay. Richard Niederberg, Service Organization. Everybody in the neighborhood council is supposed to do 10 hours a year. In reality, people should all do much more than that. And I, of course, take a lot of the time because we have Luminari every year and we expect every board member and community <laughs> chair to actually work on it. Big event at Capitol de Cahuenga. We, we've added another event on June 22nd, which is a picnic at Moore Park Park. You know, uh, free in and out burgers and all kinds of really neat stuff. And the lead person here is Denise, you know, because one person doesn't do everything on the committee. That's the way it is to delegate get the job done. Also, um, as far as giving away stuff and attending farmers markets, and giving away flyers and little tickets like that, I probably do as much as more than anybody else to try to get the people involved so they didn't know about, but they should be able to know about what happened for the neighborhood council. Um, Denise Wolving, um, homeowner seat. Um, <clears throat> if, if you have something that your committee's doing um, and you want everybody to attend it, um, it's a good idea to attend everybody else's. We all have, we all need to participate. We all need to help. Um, no one group or no one person um, it can stand out and, and do everything all by themselves. And usually when you go to the farmer's market, it's like four hours. And to ask somebody to stand there for four hours alone is kind of harsh. Uh, so if everybody takes a piece of the puzzle, um, the job gets lighter and we get better coverage. Nancy Kramer, resident. And just this week, I volunteered to run the Studio City Neighborhood Council table at your picnic on June 22nd. So I'm asking now for you 
all of you guys to volunteer to work with me on that day behind the table. We can rotate in an hour. See, isn't that good? Is how we did that? But actually, the thing that I wanted to say is um, I am looking forward to attracting people to volunteer for the Studio City Neighbor Council. And that is my goal. That's what I think can happen. Not that we have to do it all, but we can attract stakeholders to come and participate. And that's an attraction thing. That's not a, you gotta be fun and you gotta be good and organized. <laughs> Eric Previn, residential homeowner, absolutely prepared to commit the time to help out. I always, you know, I love helping out at Luminari and, and at the Totally Amazing event. And I look forward to doing more of that. And I agree with Nancy that it's really um, not a burden when you're working together to go to these events and to, you know, uh, get the word out or be a part of it. Now, you know, there are some events that some of us don't even know because we get involved with the outreach. But I think once there's a connectivity and people, um, you know, are drawn to a particular area, we should all be willing to commit some time to, to you know, press the flesh and get the word out. So I look forward to it. Thank you. And with that, we will gear up for our closing statements, everyone. Uh, I want to remind you, uh, voting is Thursday, May 16th, 4 to 8 p.m., Walter Reed Middle School Auditorium. Um, there is these little flyers here, tiny.cc backslash votes SCNC. You can go to the website to uh, view the candidates and information on what to bring. Um, with that, yet again, this is our final one. Go to the YouTube channel as well. Check everybody out. I will give you the two minutes. I was going to give one, but no, you guys are wonderful. I'll give you two to give the closing statements. And, oh, he's not here. Well, I'm throwing you all back in. Okay, we've gone around the horn. And the first lucky person will be... Joseph. Starting at the end, two minutes, my friend, closing statements. All right, so, yeah, I was thinking, if you go like a couple hundred years ago back and somebody told you this earth is round and people sitting around you will kill you for that opinion. And now I can tell you this earth is multidimensional. We live in a, in a creation which is beyond our comprehension. And it's up to us to get in the line what's inside of us and follow that track. And the, the more we start to follow what's inside of us, the more we get aligned. We meet right people at the right time and the right moment, and the thing's gonna move the direction we want. So I kindly ask you, join me on the best timeline for yourself in the close future. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, Joseph, what is your name? And this is to everybody, what is your name and what are you running for? My name is Joseph Tichy, I'm running for business representative. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Kelpfeld and I'm running for at-large representative. You know, I think one of the things that I've realized over, over as, I, as, I'm, as I'm in middle age is that we don't always have all the answers, but it becomes easier to not have the answers. And so I remember being in my 30s and really wanting to have a political career and, and everything. And, and, and I think what's, what, was, what was most probably of an educational experience was realizing that that's not what it's about. What it's about is having experience and wisdom. People will come to you. It is a very humbling thing. Um, I, I don't know the answers to every question, but I try to provide an answer. And I think that this is a responsibility. People, you know, will depend on us for, you know, it, we're like the town wise people, I guess. And, you know, I'm kind of at a loss for words because, this is, this, like I said, this is a very humbling experience. Um, but what I, what I hope to bring to, to to uh, neighborhood council is the use of, you know, the ability to use technology to increase, you know, in the business world, people use to increase productivity, number of tickets closed, number of widgets, whatever. What I'd like to do is use it to in, in increase the, the uh, number of engagements with voters because I think it'll get them more involved. And, you know, we have a lot of really important elections coming up in the next few years, one in particular. I won't get too political, but you can Google my name and find out a lot about me. And I think the more we get people involved here locally, all politics are local. The more we get people involved, the more our will as voters here in the Valley and here in, in Los Angeles, I think it'll be reflected statewide and, and nationwide. And so we have a responsibility and I'd like to, to enable people with that. And that's why I hope to have your vote. Thank you. 
Hi, uh, Benjamin, Sully, Belki, Benji. I think I've said that about 10 times now. Um, anyway, um, I just want to say, start by saying um, I've been inspired tonight. I've been inspired by everyone coming out here um, and inspired especially by all the candidates. There are some great ideas. So I think no matter who you vote for, it's going to be a great uh, board. Um, the other thing that I'll say is what I think I bring to the board is like I do have a very fresh perspective. I, um, I've appreciated um, Rick's candor, for instance, but like I think it's important to have that candor, especially when we talk about city politics, not take ourselves too seriously, but also have a, a defined objectives of what we can do. Um, and then also demonstrate those things uh, to our constituents because we have to have those wins. Um, otherwise, there's not much point in just spinning our wheels. And that's one thing that drives me crazy. And I've in my, in my professional life, I've worked really hard to not get into things that are spinning wheels and to make sure that there's measurable progress on things. And that's what I would like to do with the, neighbor, uh, the Studio City Neighborhood Council. Um, so yeah. Hi, I'm Janine Milne. And because I came in so late, I didn't have a chance to, to even give an opening statement. Um, I've lived in Studio City for over 25 years. And I, I think what a particular interest of mine and, and one I've had experience with is I also serve as a board member for Save Coldwater Canyon and our board's efforts culminated in halting a massive development in Coldwater Canyon and we continue on in our grassroots efforts to help local campaigns including um, a, a lot of land issues are coming up and one is the airport flyover noise out of Burbank that is being targeted directly over Studio City and, and over our hills. Um, that alone is causing a big um, quality of life issue in Studio City. Um, we also have the Weddington development that is going to be coming up in the next year or two and Safe Coldwater Canyon is going to be very involved in making sure that that, that precious parcel of land that the community is really um, treasured for so long remains as much intact as it can. Um, we also have SB 50 coming up that could tip, it really could change the physical look of Studio City tremendously by allowing the state to tell us that we could have a little mid Wilshire instead of our, our lovely downtown Studio City area. So I, I really feel that there's, as I said, a, a tremendous amount of land issues and quality of life issues that are coming in front of us. And I have a particular interest and strength in that. I'm also um, a big animal advocate. So um, uh, I, I, along, I'm, I'm a wholehearted participant in Next Door, where a small group of us Managed to rescue a lot of dogs. Thank you. I'm also a big cat advocate. Uh, yes, I'd like to continue on in the uh, role of the uh, service organization representative, but also like to say, even if you don't get on the board, get on a committee. And even if you're on a committee, it's okay to get your toe wet and try out another committee. For example, the big cast basically, we had a, an event with. Um, uh, up, the, up the street, basically dealing with P65 and some other cats, and I, I made some displays there and kind of took care of that for the city of uh, our neighborhood council. That we had a lot of people on the committee doing what their job is. That's important. Also, um, when it comes to getting involved, in other things like like today, I went over and I had to use the city credit card to get the food, and we had the the the. the, the the posters had to be paid for and before that we have we had banners made you know that's not my committee i'm not on the committee but you have to get involved to get everything done to make sure everything gets done thank you uh denise Wilvang, homeowner seat um yeah it's closing statement um i i have been on the, the board for a period of time and i've tried to you know stay involved and in, and in, in help maintain and, and grow uh, Studio City. Nothing is, stays the same. Um, we have to be understanding that things will change. They don't have to change as much, you know, as drastically as, as uh, SP50. But um, 
there will always be change, but we have to be on our toes and look at what that change is. Is it a good change or a bad change? Um, and I'm heartened to see all the people who really are into IT, which will help us get um, uh, out to our, our stakeholders and get our stakeholders back to us. And if we have a real <coughs> website, it would be awesome. Um, but I'm in, I've been involved in a, in a lot of different things, and, and land use is one of the things that really impacts us um, as to you know what developers are going to be doing. You know, we see an old house being ripped down, but a new house. Some of them, those you know, are nice. Um, some of them look kind of like boxes. Um, but you know, it's there's always going to be some change. But I think we need to be involved in. Um, listening to what is out there and, and what the people want. Um, you know, we don't want huge high rises. We don't want to be Encino. I get that. Um, I really don't want. We are a village. Um, if you look at Studio City, we're still a village. Um, we have local businesses. We don't have these big, huge businesses. We don't have a lot of, uh, of retail stores that are, are part of a chain. Um, we have mom and pops, so I mean we are still a village, uh, and we need to look at look out for that. Um, and I would like to be around to be part of it. Thank you, Denise. All right, Nancy Kramer, homeowner resident seat. Um, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for your, your civic engagement. Thank you, Michael, for being a fabulous facilitator for us. <laughs> um, the one thing that I just want to mention is when I was um, started out with my free time in 2012, one of the things I did was I took a, a training program. It was a two-year program. On, it, was, it was nonpartisan, and it was how to control your government, the Center for Self-Governance out of Tennessee. And through that organization, um, I'm very, it's very, very clear that we can control City Hall. We have the power. We just aren't taking control of the light switch. So um, I'm looking forward to implementing that information and the, those strategies here at the neighborhood council level. Eric Previn, residential homeowner. And uh, I'm very proud to be among this group. This is really a nice group of people who have shared their ideas. And I thank you, Mr. Piscatelli, for hosting this tonight. And. I would say that uh, if you choose to vote for me, you will be electing a real advocate for the people um, here in Studio City. I, uh, you know, I'm a journalist and a watchdog, and I pay attention to the city and the county quite carefully. And um, I make it my business to share that information with both the committee and my friends and residents. And I really think that we in Studio City have um, a special place in the city of LA. And you know, through the kinds of things we've been talking about tonight through the outreach and through the uh, connecting to people. Um, I look forward to bringing, you know, kind of this work and the idea of gathering as a little committee or group and talking about things and voting on it and deciding what we think as a real exercise in civics that the young people in Studio City, hopefully like Claire who stood up and said, I'm young, but then did have to go. But we can get some of those people, not, not necessarily teenagers, but young people to be involved and teenagers um, in defining the future of Studio City, which is what I really look forward to. So thank you, Eric Previn. I look forward to a vote. Rick Rosner, homeowner. We know what we need. We need outreach. We need future planning, which includes business encouragement, uh, development encouragement while avoiding bad development that'll screw up our city. We also need to continue to, to work with intractable issues, pri primarily homelessness. Um, I'm a nine or a 10 out of 10 for ideas. I'm a five or a six on follow through, which seems like a terrible combination. But if it's a terrible, but if it's a combination you like, then vote for me on <laughs> May 16th. <laughs> And with that, we have come to a close. So thank you all to the candidates. Uh, thank you all for showing up and asking questions. And uh, remember to vote.